Welcome to Snowmobile Sessions Live on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. It's the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. This episode of Snowmobile Sessions Live is brought to you by Energy Power Sports. They're Oakville's full-line BRP dealer with sales and service to all BRP models and so much more. Energy Power Sports always has the fun in store with a wide selection of clothing, parts, and accessories for all your power sports passions. Make Energy Power Sports your source for Can-Am off-road ATV and side-by-sides. Can-Am on-road Riker and Spider, including the Sporty F3S, Sea-Doo Watercraft and Switch pontoon boats and Alumacraft fishing boats powered by Mercury Marine. Put yourself on a Manitou pontoon or a widescape stand-up snowmobile. Energy Power Sports is the home for Lynx and Ski-Doo snowmobiles for the entire family. Do you feel the energy? Energy Power Sports, 879 Cranberry Court, Oakville, Ontario, or online, energypowersports.ca. Wow, this was a first. <laughs> I realize it's 7.30, everybody in the chat, and thank you for hanging on, but I just realized by some of your questions and comments in the chat that we weren't live. However, <laughs> the Br Bryant family and me have been having a great show. We've That's had right. <laughs> one, of the, one, of the best, one of the best interviews I've ever done. <laughs> so here we are. We had to start it again. So... Anyway, I, I started the last show with, uh, you know, I, I came across the Brant family YouTube channel when the three old guys from uh, touring to Alaska were coming on the show. And it came up as a recommended in the YouTube feed. And I think it said something like, if you enjoy seeing an old guy struggling in the Yukon, you're going to really love Philip Brant. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so here we have Philip on the far right. We have Leandra, his wife in the middle, and the son, Justin, and their dog, Scooby. How are you folks tonight? We are doing well. How are you? Thanks for having us. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. And uh, having you again, this is the second time we've done this. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> um, tell us a bit about uh, how you get into snowmobiling and how you get into this whole YouTube world. Yeah, we've been snow I've been snowmobiling since I came here 16 years ago. Um, we've made I majorly started doing snowmobiling for the Canadian Rangers, which means lots of trips out on the land, camping with Walton and just um, exploring, reopening trails and kind of that turned into a love for me. And of course, with Philippe doing that for ourselves as fun also. And that's yeah, how we entertain in the weekend a lot. That's good. And whereabouts are you located again? Uh, I know we have talked about that. I just don't want to repeat too much stuff here, but yeah, no worries. Yeah, so we are uh, in northern BC, but very far north in BC. And we are about 40 kilometers from the borders with the Yukon and uh, 50 or 60 uh, with the border uh, with Alaska. Nice. You're way, way, way remote. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Very, very yeah. And, remote. And, and, and just to let everybody know, this is a family, um, it's a family expedition, uh, YouTube channel, uh, right from taking son Justin and their dog Scooby on these really epic adventures. So Justin, what's that like to be dragged into these, uh, these crazy adventures that your mom and dad want to do? I'd say most of the time it's pretty fun. Sometimes it gets hard at some points and, you know, you're getting stuck in the overflow and you're struggling, but to the end, it's always fun. <laughs> yeah, we've seen that. We've seen, I was saying that earlier that, uh, that, you know, what you see, you, you, we see pictures of the three old guys going to the Yukon or Alaska and, and you don't, you don't actually get to live the experience like what we live through your YouTube channel and, and we're talking going through a, a, an overflow and a creek and the sled stuck and the dogs running around and the, 
that you you know you get another sled trying to yank them up up there the sides icy it's an icy hill and it rolls over and mom's in the water waist deep in freezing cold water and dad's trying not to cuss on on uh, on YouTube and and Justin's just trying to <laughs> hold the camera steady while while they try and figure out an escape plan you know yeah. is it always that crazy or or have you had some really nice days out on the out on the trails. Mm -hmm. Well, we do so some trips. Uh, we have no uh, nothing wrong that happening really. Well, it's not not that there's anything wrong, but like uh, some days are easier than others. But uh, when we started filming uh, years ago, uh, when you are a beginner, you only film when uh, everything is fine. So that was the opposite, right? We were only filming when you have time, when you're not stressed, when there is no special events. Uh, and each time something happens, you don't have the reflex to get the camera out and film. Uh, but we passed that, <laughs> and uh, now we, we we I think we also film when everything's fine. You know, the nice drone shots uh, about beautiful landscapes uh, in Alaska, in the Yukon, in Northern BC. And but now we uh, we know how to film when things are going. Uh, not really wrong, but when things are more uh, complicated, right? Such as getting stuck or uh, rolled over and stuck in overflow, passing a, a, a sketchy creek or stuff like that. We we now remember and we think of filming that and things happen. You know, last year in our trip to uh, Dawson City, to thousand kilometers, like from home to, uh, to central Yukon, it was supposed to be an easier trip than that, a trip we've uh, done before either with the Kenyan Rangers or me as a mercer or on uh, snowshoes with my wife. So we, we know the trail very well, that southern camera trail. We know it very well. And that was the first time the trail was so bad. There was, uh, they had tons and tons of snow with thousands of trees across the trail. We had to cut the lake wall the lakes were uh flooded with overflow it, it, it's the first time in 25 years that the trail was so bad and we had so much <laughs> so many events every day including a gas station with no gas which was you know it's pretty rare <laughs> yeah so yeah we, we overcome all the difficulties and at the end yeah sure there is a lot of uh in our videos there is a lot of, of that we, we, we've been uh, i think good enough to film that and it shows, but yeah, no, otherwise during the day, there's a lot of good times too. Maybe we should have shown more of that, <laughs> of the yeah. good times. Uh, I think we overcome uh, all, most of the difficulties uh, with you know, certain ease, but yeah, it was there. Like when you have uh, you know, 18 inch of water on, on, uh, on the leg with uh, deep snow on top, yeah, it's hard not to get stuck with you know, your, all your luggages you're, you're putting, right? But uh, no, some we have we have some trips uh, where nothing special happens. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hi, uh, Corey Brock asks, how long is your snowmobile season? Like, typically, when do you start riding, and when uh, when do you uh, pack it all away? Go so uh, mid December is when you can start uh, ride here in the north, uh, and then uh, it goes all the way to May if you go if you stay high elevations. Uh, but uh, for us, yeah, usually we stop somewhere in April. But you yeah, can nice. you can go all the way to May if you go in, a, in the White Pass, uh, in a higher elevation. You can trailer there. There's a road going a, a higher elevation, and you can keep skidding for all entire May if you if you wish. But so December to May. Can you ride right from your back door, or do you have to uh, do you have to trailer to the start start point for your rides? Well, we are lucky enough. We uh, we met with we we we've been living where we live for 25 years, so we've been lucky enough to have met some trails that connects us with uh, the, the network of other trails. So we really like to start from home, even if it adds a, a day or a couple of days uh, of riding or just a few hours for a smaller smaller project. So I, I really enjoy living from home. But sometimes we need to take uh, you know the trailer and trailer somewhere. But yeah, there's something special really for me and for, I think for all of us to to start right from home. Uh, I just love it. Yeah, it's good. Actually, yeah, Lapointe wants to know: Are you riding four strokes? Let's talk about that again, um, Justin. Uh, you you have uh, some exciting news this year. 
<laughs> yeah. I uh, got a new snowmobile. And it's a 600 Ace Tundra. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. And what were you riding before? Uh, before I was riding a two-stroke 440. Nice. And what about mom and dad? Yeah, so uh, dad has a 2021 Super Wide Track Scandic 900 Ace. Mm -hmm. And mom has a Wide Track 900 Ace that's we're waiting to arrive <laughs> any day now. Are, are, are they tur are they you getting turbo or are they just naturally aspirated? No. Uh, they're not the, we're not getting yeah. the turbos. No, yeah. no turbos. Okay, just do do you, do you have yeah. a reasoning behind that? Uh well, you know when, when I got my my Scandic, uh, there was no turbo available, so that was easy <laughs> easy choice. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if you had to choose now, I wouldn't take the turbo. I don't think so. Uh I I want to keep it simple. Uh, the mission already work more complex than the one we we had 25 years ago, but uh, I'm happy with the power of the 900. Um, uh, most of the time, it, it's it's just fine. And then, uh, yeah, the, the 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 least complicated, the better for for me for what we do. But uh, yeah, yeah, of course, so. uh, we have some friends with a turbo, um, uh, expedition turbos. Yeah, it, it, it sounds fun. Let's say it's yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, th I think for what you ride, though, you, you, with the wide track and the 900, that's the, plenty of sled. Yeah. Sled 519 says, yeah, buddy, I learned to ride on a two-stroke 440 when I was Justin's age. That 600 will be awesome. There mm -hmm. you go. See, we didn't get any comments like this for a whole half an hour. <laughs> I'm doing the yeah. interview, and I didn't hit go live. <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very important step step on this yeah. justin it's like if you went out to do your 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 youtube channel and you didn't press record on the camera and you went on a whole weekend trip and you come home and there's no video of it that's exactly oh, yeah, what that I did. terrible <laughs> yep greg kelly says do they live in a small community or are you totally off the grid yeah uh both actually we live in a community that's at the end of a 100 kilometer one-way road and you have to go through the Yukon and then come back down into BC to come here. So our community has 400 people, but we live 12 kilometers out of the community off the grid in a log home that we've built ourselves. And they still have better internet than I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty recent. That's pretty recent. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, what are the extreme temperatures like up there? Um, they're, they, they are changing. I know when Philippe first moved here 25 years ago, the winters were about minus 50, and in the summers it was like 25, 30. Nowadays, the median temperature in the winter is more like minus 15, minus 20, with a couple of weeks of minus 36. And in the summer, we get weeks at plus 30 now. So it's it's changing, definitely. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. It's uh, we. Um... You know, we we have minus 40, but it's, you know, you have to go north and it's, you might have one or two days like that, oh, yeah. not anything extreme like what uh, what I'm seeing from from what you experience, you know? So mm -hmm. um, has there been any, what's your favorite uh, destination that you've gone on snowmobiling? Uh, there's a few and we keep finding more. Uh, we have a few favorites here around Atlin, some nice scenery and some beautiful blue lakes. And we've discovered some nice, fun, new uh, places to discover in the summer in the southern Yukon that we'll go back to next summer. Um, yeah, do you have any places? Um, uh, I'd like to go above tree line if I can. Uh, we have a lot of mountains here. So we do a lot of uh, trail work, either with the uh, Canadian Rangers or for ourselves, you know, to help out in the community. We we maintain trails, we cut trails, you know, needs to be cut and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, when I can, I, I really like to ride above tree line and uh, do some long exploration on uh, when it's wide open. That's uh, I really enjoy that. And for destinations. Uh, Oh, you're going to Dawson last year was you know, that was just something. It, it's a classic for us, but it's it's it, it's beautiful. It, it, it is a, a nice adventure. Mm -hmm. Excellent. When you go on these adventures, how how important is technology in in 
um, making your life easier? Does it make it more complicated when you're that remote? Um, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I used to do those trips with, without technology and it was, I mean, it's, it's the same. I, I would say that with technology, reading your maps from your dashboard is just faster. You know, instead of stopping, getting your maps out of your backpack and uh, your compass, uh, we're going to spend like 15, 20 minutes to figure out, figure things out and take decisions. Well, now I can uh, read uh, GPS, my GPS or my actually my, my phone from my dashboard and it is pretty handy. <laughs> it is handy. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to safety, uh, we, we carry Enrich, uh, Iridium Enrich, uh, Garmin Enrich, and it's, uh, it's great for safety if you need help or in between us for to communicate. Let's say uh, if, uh, if Laundra and Justin are staying in uh, the camp and I want to break the trail a bit forward, uh, I can stay in touch with them through the Enrich. That, that's handy, yeah, but we, we used to do stuff without that, and it was fine. Um, feel better to have that and like i said for the maps yeah it's faster but we used to do without <laughs> and it was fine yeah too. yeah your your tra your trails that that are up there can you talk a bit about what kind of riding it is uh, like uh, down here we think of groom trails and that type of thing what are you experiencing up there when you say uh, you had told me before we went live that you reopened the gold rush trail um through several weekends Talk to us a bit about what that means when you say trail. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's more like a route. So let's say the Fantail Trail that we reopened. Uh, uh, it's a trail has been created a hundred more than 100 years ago and, and uh, for the gold rush. And it's been used by uh, different uh, people like trappers or uh, rangers or whoever. And then the last 10 years, nobody has been using it much, if at all. So when we decided to reopen it, there was a, a lot of work, uh, a lot of trees to cut. And, and the trail by itself, it, it is pretty raw. I mean, it, it is, uh, it's uh, winding, it goes up and down. It's, uh, this is not a, this is, this is not a organized trail. There's no signage. Uh, so it's blaze, uh, old blaze that you find on trees um a few cuts here and there and it, it is a trail that once broken you're not gonna make more than uh, 15 kilometer an hour if, if you're lucky and so it's uh it's mm -hmm. right yeah there. it's more of a route than a trail and indeed yeah. there in it, some parts it really follows dollies and it's mostly about yeah a route that's well blazed uh, at one part it goes on the lake and other parts it goes in the wide open area and then you kind of can go more wherever you want. Uh, and then one part it follows a mining road. Uh, but yeah, overall it means basically following a route with blazes along the way, wherever they are possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we we're going to talk about safety. Like how do you prepare for, uh, for safety when you go out on these remote expeditions? Yeah. So we uh, well, first of all, we, we were like uh, part of search and rescue, and uh, uh, for for fifteen years, uh, fire hall, and now we're still part of the, the Canadian Rangers. So we, we do a lot of training for safety uh, when it comes to ice rescue or avalanche rescue. So we train for all those kind of stuff. So we have a lot of personal uh, knowledge for that. Uh, but, what we do for safety well we always carry with us even if we go for the day we carry enough equipment that we can uh, stay overnight without suffering so if we go for a long trip uh, for one day we have with us enough uh, uh, you know, sleeping bag or in, enough jackets to, to stay all right we have uh, uh, enriched communicator so we can uh, eventually uh, call emergencies if, if we need uh, which we were used to be part of uh we what else do we do for safety yeah we have recovery gear and recovery gear yeah. of course yeah so of course it's yeah, easy yeah. to get stuck when you go open country it's easy to get stuck so we make sure we have uh, you know ropes and uh camelones and stuff like that to to, to be able to make it back home if uh, at any price pretty much mm -hmm. but we and then we yeah know. yeah and Slug519 asks, what's the search and rescue situation like in your area? If the worst were to happen, is help readily available? Or are you largely on your own when you're out far from home? 
Yeah, so we, we have a pretty good answer for that. We, we, we used to be part and we used to be the organizer of search and rescue in the, in the local area. So yes, there is a search and rescue group here. And uh, they, yeah, we would call them with uh, one, of, one of our uh, enriched device or sometimes per radio and we would get uh, help in, you know, within a few hours. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 even though we, there is co good communication, we always gonna take two three hours before they can uh, the group the the volunteer uh, people who are doing it uh, have time to uh, respond the call right uh, so there's you if something bad happen you still need to be able to to wake other for uh, the next morning if it's late in the afternoon or it's always gonna take a few hours but uh, yeah there, we, there is a group of search and rescue here so it's, and it's very well organized the people are well trained. And uh, to be honest, yeah, they, they don't mind calls because there's not that many. And uh, any every call, if the outcome is fine, is, is good training. And uh, we know what we're talking about. But we, we used to be part of those people. And yes, yeah, yeah fine. Yeah. Don't hesitate to call and, such an issue. And that's the thing. You carry a satellite phone in reach and, and as much tech as you can carry with you. Yeah. Where is your closest family if there is anything that happens? Yeah, it's so a... We actually always add like there is no cell phone service where we are and within a few hundred kilometers from here. So for us, the inReach we use for communication even between us, like say when one of us drives to the city, etc. But yeah, our, our closest family is 2,400 kilometers away. <laughs> so not close. In the same province. In the same province, just on the, the complete same... other side. They're down in the yeah, Okanagan. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's right. So when you talk about safety, though, and you're taking, and Corey said, I assume they pull a trailer. You not only pull a trailer, the best part is you have your snowmobile pulling a huge toboggan full of gear, pulling a ski boost with the dog in it called the Scooby. The Scooby I, I'm drawing a blank. The Scooby Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to me about the Scooby Mobile and how that came to be. Yeah, so um, because we're in a remote community, there's a dump here and the dumps up here in the north often have like free stores for things you don't want anymore, but you you know, they're still in usable shape. So if many years ago, somebody put this kid's trailer there. It's made of fiberglass and it has some skis underneath. And we were like, huh, I don't think Justin was even born yet. But I was like, let's take this home because maybe one day we'll have a good use for it. And so it sat in our yard forever until we were getting ready for our trip. We're like, what are we going to do with the dog? And then Philippe's like, hey, remember that trailer we have? I'm going to turn it into a Scooby Mobile. And so that's what it is today. Yeah, we put a windshield on it, uh, a bed, and uh, there we go. Because the dog is getting old, so he can't run all day. So now he's getting, uh, he has uh, his own uh, royal uh, carros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's the thing it's a it is like a royal a royal carriage for sure um, yeah. and the dog the dog has a hood in it i mean i encourage you to check out the brilliant family on youtube <laughs> after the show because uh i i started watching i think it was the the video that came up as a recommended it was part three of like a four or five part journey and as soon as i started watching it that the ski boost with the dog in it i was like I was dumbfounded where this thing was going. <laughs> and then the dog will jump out and it'll run alongside the sleds. And then, you know, you got, you, you got everybody stuck and Justin's holding the camera and mom's <laughs> waiting deep in water and dad's trying to get a come along to crank everything out and all chaos is ensuing. And all I'm thinking about is I'd be just losing it right now. <laughs> and the dog is just running around having a heyday and then he hops back up in the ski boost and away they go. Which is yeah. really, uh, which is really, really cool, and that's that's uh, it got me pressing that subscribe button right instantly when I seen that dog, and they have yeah. Scooby Mobile in a deck <laughs> on the back of the of, on the yeah. back of the ski. Yeah. <laughs> just in the <laughs> yeah. nice. which is really cool. So, um, yeah, the point says, how does the dog like the twisties? <laughs> Yeah. Carry it all right. How does he not get the twisties? I should, yeah, he is attached in the Scooby Mobile by his collar, so he doesn't get shaken too much. <laughs> oh, is there, so you have to unclip him when he wants to jump out, right? Yeah. Is that how it yeah. works? Yeah. It, you would never know. I mean, you, you see him run around once in a while, and then you yeah. see him uh, not, and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Justin, uh, 
what what is your what is your fondest memory so far of uh of some of these adventures um i'd say uh one point when we were on the dawson trip one day like i kind of had a goal of doing like 100 kilometers every day i remember we were doing <clears throat> very good until this one day where we had reached this one lake and it was just full of overflow and i remember we that day we only made it like 50 kilometers <laughs> yeah and you handled that day really well i think you know mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty impressive yeah. yeah and how when you're taking the family out like that like how much preparation you know you you're taking the the son the dog the, all your gear how, how long does it take to prepare for a trip like that yeah it takes couple of days, not full time, but of gathering stuff. I think over the years we've developed quite a good routine and become a well-oiled machine to pack all our camping stuff. Uh, but still it's a matter of, yeah, getting everything together, looking at the weather forecast and like kind of predict what we're going to need for gear and camping stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, yeah, there's a lot of thinking about it, uh, of thoughts before we go. Mm -hmm. Are we going to go uh, light, ultra light, or heavy? Because everything is going to be fine. We have different methods to go camp in the bush. We can go uh, you know, super light, not so light, or, or heavy. You know, Sometimes we know the trail has been uh, broken before us. We, the legs are, are fine. They are nicely frozen. There is a nice crust on, on top. So we can take uh, you know, all the equipment we want, of course, with those big machines like we have nowadays. Uh, and it's, let's say for the... Uh, trip to Dawson City last year, we kind of changed our mind uh, just before going that we were going, we were supposed to do, to be a bit heavier, but not super heavy. And uh, the last minute we decided to go lighter. So not super light, but lighter, still take a wall tent, but you know, no chairs, no, uh, you know, just a small table, a small stove, um, and just, you know, a bit lighter just in case uh the trail is harder than uh it is the other years we we did it and uh, thank god we did that because it was, the trail was was terrible and uh many time uh when i was breaking the trail in front there with uh the snow machine the super wide and the big bogan behind and the scooby mobile i was just too, like close to not be able to make it too much overflow or too much snow and then i was just on the maximum capacity of the machine many times so well, yeah and if i decided to go with more equipment uh, uh, no it would not have been possible so um we we think a lot of all that we tr and try to guesstimate the the condition we're gonna have it's very hard right we nobody really knows but what you're gonna get but we have different styles so we 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 think a lot before going, and then it's fairly easy to prepare because we we do those trips quite often, and we we did for uh, more than twenty years. So uh, the channel is new, but the trips are not. <laughs> yeah. Do Do you call cool. ahead to to places like Dawson City? Do you call uh, mid route like along the way to say, "Hey, listen, yeah. we're coming up on the weekend," yeah, and yes, that's right. With our colleagues, uh, you know, other. Um, Canyon Rangers from the territory, we we can you know communicate and we open our ears uh, to to get information. We not too much, we still an adventure too, but we we especially take good uh, care of listening to or uh, uh, recording all the weather events that have been this winter. So we know we have we can estimate how much ice and how much snow on the ice. And things like that, that's because that's very important, right? Let's say we don't know what expedition we're going to go. We don't know where we're going to go in the spring yet because we want to know how the winter is going. Like, is that mm -hmm. a winter with a lot of snow or, or a lot of ice or not? And then we're going to make our trip depending on the conditions, not, not the opposite. So uh, there's still a lot of thinking, right? We know how, so when, once we take the decision where to go, uh, we're fairly quick to prepare because we've done that quite often. But before to taking the decision, there's a lot of thinking behind it. Mm -hmm. what, what, at what age was Justin when you decided to start taking him on these crazy trips? He uh, 
was two months old when he did his first bike touring adventure in France. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then right. and then what about what about snowmobiling? And Meta. yeah, I Meta. think maybe he was like remember that one Christmas maybe he was like four when we went on this when he went on his first snowmobile camping trip. And then nice. when he was I think he was five or six when two local ladies were generous enough to um offer Justin uh Chandra too uh, from the nineteen nineties. And that's how for him, like the individual snowmobile, I'm doing my own thing. I'm going camping with mom and dad thing started. That's great. And it, that, that the enjoyment level, did it increase uh, a lot, Justin? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the machines, they just keep on getting better and yeah, it gets a lot funner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice, nice. And do you do any modifications to your snowmobiles to, to make them perform better in those conditions? Slightly, uh, but not that much. We uh, we can add uh, a bit of flotation, putting like wider skis uh, for uh, Leandra and Justin. Not for me. I like narrow skis for me to be able to carve or cut the chairs uh, on the side here. But uh, yeah. we add, uh, add uh, I'm adding actually a second uh, a throttle on the left side. That's also to be able to. Uh, you do side heating sometimes uh, when you uh touring through mountains you need there's a lot of side heating to do so if you don't have the throttle on the right side it might not be possible yeah <laughs> that's yeah. why i don't have that's why i don't have white skis that's why i have a second uh throttle is for side heating a uh, long distance cutting a trail uh side here and then uh we all add some uh, little uh, ice grip studs on our track that's what we do uh, yeah, we uh, we put also the the glove box extension where we can uh, put our cell phone for mapping, and the cell phone is uh, keep charging, and uh, there's a little warmer for the cell phone there. So that's a great yeah. addition to you know like for the digital uh, electronic gadgets. <laughs> yeah. I really like what, that what, one. What, so can look what at maps the map. do you? Yeah, what maps do you run? Like, are, do you, I imagine your your nine hundreds have the. Do they have a ten and a quarter inch gauge, or are they they just small gauges on those? Small like, gauge. Do you have the big screen? Yeah, okay. No, not so yet. You do... no, yeah, the okay. Scanics are always one generation uh, earlier than the rest of the uh, the machine. Mm -hmm. So I'm still on the new one. Like Leandra is gonna get a new machine, and it is a, a gen generation four. So she has only and my, myself too the small screen. Mm -hmm. So we have that yeah. extension box where you can put, uh, that's me, I'm using a, a iPhone Pro Max kind of screen. Mm -hmm. And then what GPS are you running on it? Yeah, we each we each have, like to use a different one. Uh, Philippe likes to use the Topo Maps app and I like to use Gaia. Oh, cool. And then cool. we, yeah, and then we run that on our snow again. Yeah. We got a ton of good questions pop up here, here. Uh, La point uh, do you carry your fuel or do you have stops along the way yeah so it's well it depends where we're going some places we're going there's no uh, refueling possible so then we carry everything with us <coughs> when we went to Dawson city the 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 the, net, the network of trail we're using happened to cross uh, the Alaska highway several times and then that's where we refuel um, oh sweet yeah, we had a, a trip once, uh, not a family trip, but a trip once south to Telegraph Creek. And then uh, we had to add a refueling by a ski plane. Uh, so there's a little bit of a different situation there, depending where we're going. But yeah, it happens. Sometimes we have to carry the, uh, like, you know, 10, 12 jerry cans with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I actually, imagine. Yeah, that's yeah. actually one reason why. Justin has upgraded to the Tundra because the 440 was taking more fuel and we have plans for more remote trips and then fuel efficiency is one, one of the keys to success. Yeah, oh, still, that's right? great. Yeah. There was some chat going on about what you see when you're out there. Uh, Bobby O says he might see a rabbit or a deer on the trails. He says, I can't imagine what they must see up there. And then someone else added, you must carry a rifle in your pack. Do you? Do you carry, like, do, um, what's the craziest no. things you've seen? 
No, no, we don't carry a rifle each time, actually. Uh, depend, you know, sometimes that's when we were talking earlier, you know, are we going heavy, uh, semi-heavy or light? <laughs> if we go heavy, oh yeah, let's take a rifle, you know, for maybe safety or just in case or whatever. But when we decide to go light, no, we don't take a rifle. Uh, we, we, in our experience uh, with snow machine or not with snow machine by all by skis, uh, we have encounter with wolf in the uh, wolves in the winter, but it's never been an issue. Uh, you can have wolf uh, at night around camp, howling around camp. That's pretty common. When we skiing or snowshoeing, they can follow you for a few days. But we they never they never a problem they're just very curious of humans yeah it is the first time it, it is a bit scary and mind you <laughs> um but we only take a rifle when we decide that it's okay to have too much equipment and then we feel better yeah. you know otherwise uh, you know otherwise in the uh, at night like when we don't take a rifle we have bear sprays that would work uh as long as you keep them warm they would work as well to spray you know Wolf would be uh, too too nosy, but I don't think it would happen. We more are more scared in the winter of uh, it happens sometime in the Yukon. You know, uh, grizzlies that wake up somehow in the in the middle of the winter, and uh, there can be a problem. Uh, yeah, wolf in the middle of the trail, uh, there would be another problem. But uh, so far, for when it comes to guns, we don't have uh, rules really. Uh, if we can, yeah, we we'll take one, but sometimes. Yeah. Uh, we never had to use one, to be honest, uh, and then we don't think uh, it would happen. I think a lot of people, the the most problem people are have in the in Alaska are moose in the middle of the trail for dog mushers. Let's say uh, mm -hmm. dog don't want to stop because they see a moose, they get excited, so they they a big problem. But on a snow machine, I think we, we, when we see a moose uh, in the middle of the trail, we definitely would stop way before and wait for the the animal to clear. So uh, we yeah. don't believe wolf a uh, problem for us, uh, no. but yeah. See, sometimes they're... Hey, Philip, you had a perfect opportunity to say you don't carry guns. You you're so strong, you wrestle them <laughs> with your bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, uh, yeah. Sometimes you have perfect. to be like, I mean, if you do a ski expedition, you don't take a rifle because it's like three, four kilos for nothing, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what kind of gear? Let's talk about the gear that you wear uh, when you're on these these adventures. Uh, gear. The yeah, clothing. so we all three have the bunny boots, or up till now, anyway. Which uh, we I made a review about them a couple of weeks ago. They're those white clown shoe looking boot. Oh, but we're, really we're very familiar with bunny. We're we are all very familiar with oh. bunny boots. Well, yeah. great. Awesome. Well, we love them, <laughs> but uh, we are changing out now because they're becoming harder to find and more expensive. We want to try something different. And Philippe is about to go work in Resolute Bay for a month in January. And so we asked his colleagues there, like, what do you wear for boots up there? And they recommended us the Baffin Apex boots with a spare liner, because well, as you know, the bunny boots are awesome for going through the overflow and having no liners to worry about. Um, so we both purchased the Apex boots and we're going to try those out this winter. We'll see how that goes. And other than that, for gear, we mostly have different layers depending on the weather. Yeah. Do you wear uh, full mitts or gloves or what do you wear on your, like, do your hands get cold? Uh, yeah. So I have, yeah, we are, we are different. I have Raynaud syndrome. So my hands and feet get cold really quickly. Um, so I carry a few pairs of gloves. Um, and Philippe gets hot hands. He has hot hands most of the time, so he doesn't carry so many gloves. Uh, I, I take gloves in case, but I usually uh, just fine with leather gloves, like working gloves. I'm just fine with that. Uh, Eighty percent of the time, but I carry mitts in my uh, in my snowmobile, and just in case uh, I get cold. But yeah, I got a hot hands, so I just <laughs> yeah, I kind of work uh, bare bare hands. Um, a lot like doing mechanic works or stuff like that and just little leather, leather gloves work gloves are fine for me mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. i think justin just, takes after his dad uh, hey you you yeah. are, what do you take i just take uh i take more than leather gloves i i take gloves like some good gloves but 
Like, what do you think the most important piece of gear that Justin, what do you think the most important piece of gear that you, uh, you wear on these things is, what would your opinion be on that? Um, like any piece of gear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pick one. For the snowmobiling trips, probably the snow pants. Yeah. Keep them warm is key, right? Are they are you waterproof when you go in there, or do you, you do not like to swim and like your mother does? Mm, uh, I'm not waterproof. No, no, no. no. no yeah, really. there's a question here. What not sure if we could ask, but what do you do for a living? Can we talk about that for a bit? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we uh operate a coffee roastery and that's. And we also are Canadian Rangers, but yeah, together um, our main uh, our main business is uh, coffee roastery. Yeah, coffee roastery. So, yeah. so talk about how that works. You you import the beans. Yeah, so we started that ten years ago. Um, it's a coffee roastery that operates on our off the grid property, so it's on solar power. And to make it kind of the next step in harmony with where we are, we have a coffee roaster that uses wood fire as a heat source instead of propane. Uh, we had it custom built for us in Italy. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, or we import the coffee beans from, I think we're at seven different countries right now. Uh, it's all certified organic. And then we roast them here. Philippe, that's what he's been doing all day. He's the roaster. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, then we package it and we sell it, uh, through like retail stores and online on our website. Yeah. Would there be any stores in, in, you know, Southern Ontario, Canada or Northern Michigan that, that we may find your coffee? Uh, um, not at the moment. But it's very local. It's a it's a small company. It's a yeah. It's, it's a small business. It's pretty small. It's a it's a micro roastery. So it's very <laughs> local. So do you go Northern BC? We do have uh, online store sales a bit everywhere, but uh, when it comes to uh, uh, retail stores, it's mostly uh, BC and the Yukon. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. And then, and then schooling is Justin homeschooled or does or is there a school system in your area? Uh, yeah, there's our town has a small school with I think there's uh, 26 students right now. Um, mm -hmm. It's 12 kilometers away from here, but we felt like because we already live isolated, it was important for us for Justin to go to school so he can socialize. Uh, but yeah. That's great. I wasn't sure uh, sure how that would go up there. And I mean, the schooling that he's getting, the education that he's getting on these long excursions, I think there isn't a classroom in the world where you're going to learn what you learn on a day-to-day -day basis, Justin. I, I think one day you'll realize how lucky you are, you know, that you'll be able to look back and go, man, that was a, that was a heck of a ride. Thanks mom and dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby says the Briant family has got a life, got the life being that close to Juneau, Alaska, all my money would go towards Alaska and brewing company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, and how, how do you involve the family in P Philip in, in maintenance of your gear? And, and I mean, it, we're going to show you what, there was another question, what you do in the off season. And, and I know it's motorcycling and an off road four by four adventures uh, that type of thing. How do you involve the family in, in the, the maintenance and keeping everything running in tip top shape? Yeah. Because of all those activity we have, uh, uh, um, one of my condition to, for everyone to have a, a dirt bike or a boat or whatever, there's so many machines to maintain that everybody has to maintain his own stuff. <laughs> oh, that's stuff. good. This is too much, otherwise it would be insane, right? So Leandra is very, very handy. She can do tons of stuff uh, in the homestead. She can use a chainsaw, a power tools, and so she maintains her own machines. Uh, and same for Justin, is learning uh, how to deal with uh, engines, uh, tires, and all those kind of things. Uh, so, uh, so it's possible. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible, right? Because we, are, we are, Justin is busy at school. We both working full time. Um, yeah, if you. If you when you have a machine, you need to maintain it. And, and it's good, because even on the land, you know, to have, everybody knows a little bit. It, it is good. It's for, it's for me, it's a, it's a safety. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I know more advanced uh, things for mechanics, but 
I don't mind showing them. And, uh, and when it gets more complicating, complicated, and then I can do it completely. But I uh, really want uh, Justin uh, to to do his share, and uh, and uh, Leandra doesn't mind uh, or doing some oil changes and dealing with a whole bunch of stuff. And it's uh, that's the way. Yeah, that's the only way it can really happen when uh, we, uh, 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 we we have so many uh, hobbies, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Outdoor Hobby Guy says, can you post the full channel name? And the Bryant family is the channel name. How many subscribers yes, do you have right now? I don't know. <laughs> we had 926 this morning. Right okay, now? I want everybody. I want everybody to subscribe to these guys. Let's push them over the. We have we have Mike Galitz just hit a thousand a couple of weeks ago. Let's get these guys over that one thousand <laughs> channel mark. We need about eighty people, not even that. Yeah, so it's at nine hundred twenty-seven right now. So. <laughs> there we go. So yeah. hopefully we can push you over the top, and that'll be Justin's uh, Christmas present. How's that? You yeah. <laughs> so let's get them up to a thousand thousand subscribers. But definitely, it's a. It's very interesting content to watch, and and you had mentioned about about how when you started filming, you didn't know what to film, and then you get stuck and you film the whole thing. and And I think that's a nice thing about it is most channels don't show that the nasty part of the adventures. You know, you just see the good stuff, and you know, in your case, you you see the whole um, turmoil that you're going through, and when you, when you get stuck <laughs> in that water flow. Um, it was a, it was good. It was great to watch. Cause it's like, I was, how the heck are they going to get out of this? And, you know, and the worst part is you've got your son and your dog there and you're wondering, you know, that's, you know, if it's just you and Leandra, it's still bad to get stuck and, 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 you know, have problems, but it's something two adults can get through. But when you're, when you're mm -hmm. taking the whole family along, that really, does that throw a wrench into things? Ah, actually, uh, no. Yeah, yeah. We think about it a lot, and then we always, uh, that, that's part of the thinking before we go, uh, what uh, what do we do if all our machines are stuck in the overflow and we're not able to move them out? So we have plans for that. Uh, that's why we always carry everything we want with us to uh, to be able to camp, you know, in the, let's say in the late, in the in the event we were, all the machine are, are, are stuck in the overflow yeah we will go on shore the the closest on shore and go camp there have the wall tent set up with uh, the fire inside dry and dry all our things and uh, eat and rest and uh, and we would have a plan for the next day and actually it happened to uh, myself and a bunch of my colleagues uh, of uh, the canyon rangers to have like something like 12 or 14 machines stuck in the overflow and uh, yeah, we had to go camp on shore and uh, come up uh, later on that, 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 the night to get uh, to prepare the machine for the next day. So we, with our experience, we came through ex where worse experiences <laughs> that yeah. make us confident to uh, deal with most of them. Of course, there's always you know things you can't plan, uh, but we are confident that uh, it, it, we are safe in all those crazy things we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to add yeah. to that, I think that, sorry, as as a family, I think on the Dawson trip, I really felt that, and I hope it showed on the video too, that whatever obstacle we came to as a family, we knew that sometimes it was hard, but we never felt that we were not going to make it through. I think that our combined skill set is really, we are set for success, and we know how we can build on each other and what our strengths are, and uh, yeah, I, I think... Uh, we're a really good team together to yeah. make it through. Yeah. Yeah. That, very, very cool. And that's the thing. It's a, we're going to see some pictures and we've, we've captured a lot of them uh, and we'll talk more about your adventures, but let's get into the fan photos. We've got a couple photos from some of the guests that are in the chat right now. And then we'll, uh, we'll get into showing some of your adventures and, and talking more about it. How's that? Sounds awesome. good. And this time we are recording, so <laughs> <laughs> that, this one's going down in the history of uh, yeah. things that, that I've ever done live, that's for sure. Uh, and I couldn't have asked for better family to spend it with. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Fan photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction. This season, quit sliding sideways on the ice and losing races to your buddies. A fast track stud kit will help you with improved braking and give you the arm ripping acceleration you crave. I put over 3,000 clicks last season on my Renegade 850, and I'll tell you, these studs exceeded my expectations. Not one broken stud, 
My Ida wheels still look like new, and they hooked up like I was on rails in the twisties, inspiring confidence every ride. Fast Track Top Gun kits are the highest rated stud kit at 4.9 stars with over 230 reviews. The studs are heat treated stainless so they are strong and they don't rust. The kit is lighter, easier on the track and has a lifetime warranty against braking. Each kit comes with a track specific template for complete balance with over double the scratch lines from stock templates. All listeners when purchasing a stud kit can get a free install kit, a $30 value. Visit FastTrack.co, add both products to the cart, and use the coupon code SNOW at the checkout. That's F-A-S-T-T-R-A-C dot C-O. There we go. How many kilometers do you, or miles, do you guys typically put on in a season? Um, just a couple of thousand, but not so much, actually. Not so much. Oh, is that right? But yeah, it, yeah, it's, I, it's in the smiles, not the miles, I guess. That's right. Yeah. yeah that's right. Well, yeah. and it's mostly, <laughs> uh, what we do is mostly like trail and narrow and lots more like trail cutting work style snowmobiling versus yeah. like the, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. Yeah. Last year with a thousand carriers to Dawson. So you, we had 1,000 there and then another thousand around, you know, cutting trails here and there. But when you work with your snow machine, it, uh trying to or explore the different uh, new areas or cutting trails you know, actually the mileage uh, doesn't accumulate that much actually greg on, kelly's got a on. greg kelly's got a good point too he says you yeah. drive slower um which yeah, is yeah. is right you're not you, you no, can't go yeah. 80 80 miles an hour you you're doing 15 miles an hour you know what i mean that's, yeah, that's right yeah it takes us an entire yeah. day to do 100 kilometers uh, pretty much yeah, that's right. And that's the thing yeah, when I'm Justin good. said that he was he was hoping to do a hundred kilometers a day. That's a that's a big uh, that's a big goal. Yeah, when mm -hmm. you break the trail, it, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So we got a couple of new subscribers there for you. I think there's three or four at least that I've seen oh. there. Well, thank you. Yeah. So that, that's great. No problem. Oh, yeah. No problem. Hey, it, and I'm getting what 30, 40 percent of the cut when you start monetizing or what? How's that? Yeah. We got to get a contract signed, <laughs> Justin. We got to get the paperwork out of the way first. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Wouldn't you like one of these, Justin? Yeah. A little Skidoo MX four seventy, the, nice. the yellow rocket. This is from oh, our, yeah. our Jacob Massart sending in a photo a week, so he's thinking old school now. He says. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. I almost bought one of these one day. I had the older one, and then. This one came up and the guy didn't have an ownership for it. And then I found out uh, it was on a uh, comment on one of the Facebook marketplaces that the, it wasn't even the guy's sled that he was selling. That he had done some yeah. work on it for a guy. The guy didn't pay for it yet. And he was trying to sell the money, the sled for the money. Meanwhile, the guy was trying to come up with a payment plan to get it back. So I was mm -hmm. like, well, I don't want to get involved in that one. So I passed on mm -hmm. it. But, that one looks in really good shape, Jacob. Thanks for sending that in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, and then this is what he's he's got some power freaks on a powder freaks yeah. heads on his on his wow. uh, eight fifty Renegade XRS. So uh, I was really hoping, Justin, that's what you were gonna get there, buddy. Is a XRS <laughs> eight, XR eight S eight fifty with the big ten and a quarter inch screen. You know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Philip, have you ever done any mountain riding, like with like the one fifty fours or or one sixty five? No, 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 just I just I tried some, but that's it. Never, yeah, is never it never something you ever have interest in in going on those performance sleds and um, and letting her rip? No, I'm I'm driven by uh, exploration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is a different mindset, isn't it? Yeah, it is a different mindset. Yeah, totally. So uh, exploration, playing, uh, playing in the deep snow, uh, to train, like uh, to uh, to train Leandra and Justin. Sometimes we go somewhere uh, by a hill and we do you know different different things with a snow machine to try to push our limits and learn uh, you know how to carve or how to hill climb or stuff like that. So a little bit, but. Uh, I'm not interested. I'm not, oh, yeah, let's do that this afternoon. First of all, we don't have the machine for it. You know, uh, carving yeah. is uh, super wide. It's very hard. <laughs> it takes, uh, oh, it takes a lot of efforts. So, uh, no, we're driven by exploring, uh, checking uh, new plateaus, new valleys, 
checking new landscapes. That, that's what's driving uh, driving us. Oh so yeah, for sure. Have had a really opportunity. Maybe Justin is dreaming about it. I'm not sure. <laughs> Justin, how close are you are to the mountains? If you wanted to do something like that, like if he saves up all his allowance from from sweeping the floors at the beanery uh, and, he, and he buys a summit. What, how, uh, see, I'm helping you out, Justin, here. Um, <laughs> how, how far is it for him to go uh, riding like that? Oh, yeah, it's, it's just a few kilometers away. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what you, you know what you're going to ask Santa for now, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is Greg Kelly. He says, hey, Gary, with Gulit sending in a photo of his new sled. I thought I'd do the same. This is his 23 Renegade XRS 600R competition package. Mm -hmm. It's nice. the ultimate trail sled for Eastern Ontario. It's lightweight and superior suspension. It's quickness, cornering, traction, two ply with the studs. And even his dog Murphy there got agrees after a couple dog treats. <laughs> there you, go. you think Scooby and, and Murphy would get along, Justin? Yeah. Oh, Scooby yeah. dancing always. A lot of dogs. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and I agree, Greg. That's a that's a wicked sled, man. That's a yeah. nice package. Love it. So now we're back into your photos here, and uh, we can start talking about this. But this will give you an idea. I got to move out of frame here a bit. Here, there's Scooby there. Now we don't have the the Scooby mobile on the back of yeah. this shot. No breaking. What trail. are you doing yeah. here? Yeah. yeah, so that's Justin. He's uh, uh, this is on our way to Dawson City. Um, there was lots hmm. of snow causing some trees to fall. So Justin is here out front with the axe, chopping the tree away so we can pass through. Yeah, he was. Uh, we we let him uh, lead the the pack sometimes, so he can uh, learn different skills, right? Now, Justin, do you get to run the chainsaw? No. 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 Not so yet. How, how, how old are you now? I am How 11. old are you, Justin? You're 11? Okay, you're, you're getting to the chainsaw age. Just be very yeah. safe about it. But, oh, yeah. uh, we have an you know, electric chainsaw here at home that he uses. So, yeah. Oh, perfect. That's easy. Yeah, it, it, cuts, it cuts wood, not fingers, they say, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Justin, you wear a snowsuit that says France on the back. Is that one of Dad's uh, old snowsuits from home? <laughs> um, I think that's one of your old jackets, right? Not really, no. We, uh, we happen to have a lot of friends who are part of uh, ski teams uh, in France, and uh, when they are done with their jackets, they give that to Justin. So he has uh, like a, a ski, a lot of the French ski team jacket. <laughs> that oh, nice. Has. So that's the thing. They're not, it's not typically a snowmobile jacket, then it's actually just a ski jacket, is it? That's right. Yeah, yeah, it's a yeah nice. ski jacket, yeah. You guys are very self-sufficient. Like it, it seems that you're very um, humble about the way you do things, and and you don't waste uh, equipment right. or or anything like no, that. Everything's yeah. very no. smartly thought out and and executed when you go into these things, right? Yeah. Mm. And then this this is pre-season or is it post-season? You're you're riding your dirt bikes here. Oh, yeah. yeah, that would be uh, June up in a little bit of ele elevation. There, there's still some snow. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah. Uh, and we're what fun. do you have for motorcycles? What are we looking at here? One's got a license plate on it. Dual yeah, sport. so Philippe and I have uh, a dual sport, a dual sport 250s, uh, little, just little bikes to uh, uh, actually uh, just to follow Justin around in his dirt bike. <laughs> yeah yeah so what are they are they uh, what model are they we've got a lot of motors like dirt bikers in the chat so yeah. you got to so give the, us the, more uh, information than that year yeah. make yeah. model a yamaha 250 xt so it's a, a little nice. dual spot that's uh very light and good enough for going in the mountains uh, for light duty uh off-roading and justin has uh what do you have justin uh, I have the 144 stroke yeah, from Kawasaki. Kawasaki, yeah. yeah. Don't yeah, we got quite remember the model name. Yeah, it's, it's, a it's a KDX, isn't it? It's a KDX or KLX. Yeah, KLX. KLX. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I have a I have a I have a 1989 Yamaha DT 200 R. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So it's a it's a two stroke uh, version oh, of what yeah. you guys have there. Yeah. yeah. So. 
but uh, that must be wicked riding out there. And this is your typical camping setup here. That's which right. is, yeah. Like you guys, like when you first set that tent up, I it, there was one video that shows you getting everything out. And then the next scene is, is this crazy Taj Mahal of a tent. It's, I can't believe what you guys like how did that fit in the toboggan i mean <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, what, it's is this much. some kind of hollywood magic where you've got a jeep beside you hauling all your gear you know yeah 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 no yeah this is our well tent it's uh one of the things of making do with what we have uh it's one thing that we definitely are looking to change because it's very heavy uh we choose this because if something happens with our snowmobile that we can pop the tent right over it, turn on the stove and like work on the snowmobile, thaw it out. So it's kind of like a pop-up cabin for that. Yeah. Um, it's but also it's... Uh, traditional here. Uh, people travel with their wall tent. That's also what we're doing with uh, uh, Canyon Rangers. So that's what we have. Uh, but yeah, when we change camps every day, yes, it's, it's a little bit fastidious. So uh, we are thinking of going with uh, uh, ice shelters kind of tent. Like a smaller, yeah, a little bit yeah. smaller yeah. and a lot lighter. Yeah, because yeah. it takes for yeah. this with this tent, it takes two hours uh, from the moment we stop till the moment we have heat inside. Because every day, because the tent is big, depending on how cold it is, we also need to cut firewood, etc. So especially if we've had a long day with lots of overflow and things, it's kind of like one more thing to do for two <laughs> hours: set up the tent and haul firewood and stuff. So. Yeah, we were looking for something lighter, and there were a few options, some more expensive than others. But I think we may try uh, the, the fishing tent setup this winter. Yeah. So you carry a wood stove as well? That's one of the questions. Yes, yeah. we do, yeah. Uh, very yeah. light uh, duty. Uh, the, it's called the Airtight. I'm not sure why they call it Airtight, because they are not Airtight, but that's the, that the brand name. Uh, they're just tin stove, and they're fairly large. So you can put a lot of wood in there, so it lasts you know, part of the night uh it's it's nothing mm -hmm. much about it but it's just light yeah yeah Corey says very impressive it, it is it's, uh, <laughs> it's how warm how warm does it get in there justin like it, can you be you know in your t-shirt and underwear or how how warm does it get in that tent yeah you could go t-shirt and underwear but that's yeah. wild. It doesn't last. You need to last, constantly yeah. put store, uh, wood in there so it stays warm, right? It's not insulated, so you can get 20 degrees in there, uh, Celsius, but uh, it doesn't stay like that very long. So yeah, it takes uh, quite a bit of firewood every night. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can yeah. dry all your equipment, all your pants, uh, jackets, so socks, and boots, and everything dries super, super fast. And it's very comfy, you know, it's like a little home every night after all the efforts of the day, you you feel safe uh, and secure. Yeah, nice. Does the floor get wet, though, when you get heat in it, or does it dry up pretty fast? Uh, so if you if you camp only one night at the same spot, the, the snow gets uh, compact. So we pack the snow a little bit with the snow machine before we set the tent, but we keep the snow. If you stay more than one night, you will need to shovel the snow uh, off. Uh, Otherwise, it would get a little bit steamy or a little bit wet. But for one night, uh, the snow uh, does pretty good with the heat. Right? What do you yeah. think? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Question, uh, do, do you take the kitchen sink? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and does it take all three? You lift it off the sleigh. Um, no, I think actually Almost. in one of the videos, Justin films us dropping it into the toboggan. But how, is it like 80 pounds, the tent, uh, the tent canvas? Yeah, I would say more yeah. than 80 kilos. But... 80 kilos, yeah. It's, it takes the two of us. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. heavy. But, yeah, see, this is too, this is heavy. Yeah, but it is also yeah. comfort. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. What, what advice do you have for families that think they should try something like this? Yeah, um, go out there and do it. Yeah. Uh, we have some friends with really young kids that go camping with us mostly in the summer for now. But um, I was, yeah, my encouragement is say just go out and do it. It's going, it may be hard and it may be full of challenges in the beginning, uh, but that's how you learn and how you improve. And um, then the kids become used to it. And just like Justin, then it just becomes second nature for them to, to go out and do these things. 
Do you have so friends, cool. Justin? Justin, do you have friends at school that do the same type of thing, or is this pretty unique? Mm, not as extreme. Yeah, but they they do go snowmobiling with as a family and camping and things like that. Yep. Yeah, right on, right on. Like you, you all have really high, uh, higher than average safety training. You know, professional level. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that's part of this? The you, reason you're successful is is because you take safety first. Like, is it something where if someone's gonna go on an on a long excursion in the wilderness with no marked trails that that they should they should take some safety courses to start? Well, yeah, I guess they should. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, if you start with uh, no or little little or no experience, you should start you know, not too far from home or not too far from uh, the truck and check it out uh, and, and, and being uh, progressive, you know, uh, taking time before you go further and further to, to build uh, experience and confidence. Um, yeah, I wouldn't start, I don't know, I, I think I've been doing that all my life and I, I did those kind of stuff with my folks, not on snow machines, but you know, non, non mountaineering kind of thing. So uh, yeah, it's definitely second nature to me, but I think if I had to start now, uh, I would go slow, you know, uh, not too far from uh, safety uh, to, 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 to build experience. You need experience for that. And, and training, yeah, tech training, uh, you know, for avalanche rescue, for mm -hmm. ice rescue. There's a whole bunch of programs all over Canada for, uh, you know, courses for, you know, a few days, one mm -hmm. a few hours to a few days to, to, uh, to, to check on the... Uh, um, safety yeah, yeah and safety, wilderness yeah. first aid and yeah. things like that yeah it's yeah. always good to have in the pocket and, and yeah. to say that you know for us we, because we live you know 12 kilometers away from the village and the village itself is very remote we for some people just our house is extreme <laughs> but we, yeah that's right. it's our home <laughs> i mean yeah we have to haul water you know once uh, you know, we, we haul our own water we everything all the heat is uh, fire is wood we have but it's for some people, our way of living is already pretty extreme. So for us, it's second nature. It's very safe. It's home. And uh, uh, I don't know. It's, yeah. I would, mm -hmm. uh, if I was starting, I would start. Yeah, there's so, nothing. Yeah, I would say very there's, simple. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with having tricks up your sleeve and, and uh, yeah, and those kind of courses in your pocket. The, the, mo the more you prepare, the, the better you're going to be, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I think you mentioned about your home when we weren't recording. Mm -hmm. uh, you built the home yourself, the log cabin yourself. How how big is it? How how many years did it take you to build? It's uh well we have different um, let's it might be like uh, well, I don't know, so it's like two thousand square foot or something. Yeah. Yeah, two thousand square feet. And two about, stories. Plus yeah. uh, plus uh, heated uh, shop. The rose tree, and uh, yeah, so so it's, it's a bit more than for, for us. We don't call it a cabin; we call it a house. But for some people, it must be a cabin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, do you have access to hardwood? Uh, outdoor hobby guy thinks it's just softwood that you have access yeah, to. Yeah, softwood. Yeah, yeah uh, basically, pines, for spruce. when it comes to uh, firewood, it's uh, spruce and pines. And yeah, it's I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, it's fairly easy. It's everywhere. When you're roasting your coffee, does that pine make it better, or or how do you get the smoke in the? Well, the the drum, uh, it's a double drum, so the the smoke doesn't go through the beans, just the heat. Oh, I got you. So you're just yeah. you're you, you don't smoke the the no, beans. We, I, I, no, we don't smoke. They have yeah. natural. They have that aroma is natural in the beans. Is it? That's right. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then here we are, we're looking at a thermometer here, and it's uh, it's your, you know, minus thirty two or something yeah. to, to that degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Up on the wing trip, so thirty, it's still manageable. You know, it starts to get cold, but it's still quite manageable. Uh, with experience in anyway, riding by my thirty, yeah, it's, things are slightly harder, but it's still okay. I think it starts yeah. to be hard when it gets under minus forty, and things get a bit more complicated. But thirty is. Well, it's cold, but it's not that bad. Like, machine works very well. The, 
you know, the, you don't need special uh, gloves or nothing really. It's, it's, you, uh, you have to be a bit more careful. And for, I think 40 is uh, an under starts to be more sketchy. <laughs> yeah. You know, I find once you get going, though, you don't feel the cold. You yeah. know, it's it's uh, first when you step out, we go, oh, 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 and you know, and you, yeah. your sled's cranking over like, rrr, rrr, you know, and or you're pulling it manually and it's, you know, gug, gug, gug. I, I think yeah. once you get going and moving, you, you, the, the yeah. temperature it's becomes funny. nothing. Now, this yeah, just... this shot in particular, for those listening to just the audio version of this, it's the thermometer covered in frost, reading minus 32 or lower. And it's in the package that it came from in the store. And as, the, <laughs> as the frugal doer, I love this because you're gonna you took this thermometer on the trip, and then when you finished the trip and you took it back to the store and returned it and said, <laughs> "I didn't need it." <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's it's a cheap protection. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, <laughs> That's and then at least is. you always know where it, it is. You'd lose a little round thing like that, right? Yeah. yeah. It's best to have it in the bigger package. Yeah. <laughs> I probably just gave you an idea. You'll be taking back all the all the thermometers from here on. <laughs> yeah. 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 Eight bucks back is eight bucks back. I don't care who you are. Yeah. <laughs> so. Look at this. This picture here is amazing. You're riding the, the motorcycles up this. Yeah. Uh, looks like a jeep path and the mountains in the yeah. background with snow on them that's mm -hmm. uh that's crazy like is this your neighborhood here yeah it is it's home it's uh mountains behind home uh there's hundreds of kilometers of tracks uh mountain tracks and forest tracks just like that uh if we were uh around atlin and it's uh yeah it's, it's paradise in winter and paradise in summer for all those spots Mm -hmm. and, uh, so in the summer, we like is uh, we have those two dirt bikes out and uh, an old four by four Toyota truck that we use for uh, uh, as a the camping truck. Camping truck. Yeah. And we go for weekends, mm -hmm. uh, dirt biking and four by fouring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it a Hilux? A Toyota Hilux? Is that yeah. what I've seen in your videos? Yeah, that's right. right. An old one from uh, 87, 1987 Toyota. Yeah, uh, with uh, okay, half a million so, kilometer on it. Really, that's just broken in. That's ready to go another <laughs> half a million not sure, kilometers. <laughs> not sure. I got to do some house cleaning here. Mike Galit says I'll buy a round for Gary, and here we go. Justin, start your sled. <laughs> there we go. Thanks, Mike Galit. That's awesome. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much. No flies in that shot. The bugs must carry around in the summer months. Do you have bugs? Like <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we have lots of bugs. Oh, yeah. well, well, some years <laughs> can be bad. Yeah. yeah. Mike, Mike Lee says, I want to ride dirt bikes out there. I do too. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Uh, let's let's uh, idea for that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. yeah. We'll do a channel collaboration out there. The, the, yeah. the Bryant family will fly us out, Mike, and our bikes. <laughs> yeah. Justin, Mike Galitz has has a collection of motorcycles. You got to watch his YouTube channel to appreciate it. CR five hundred, CR four fifties. He's got new. He's got old. He's got classic Kawasaki's restored, mm -hmm. like they're better than showroom condition. Yeah, check right. out Mike Galitz's channel, Justin. You'll All love right. it. Yeah. Here we go. There's the Scooby Mobile. Yeah. Right there. There's the Scooby Mobile. Yeah. So it's got this. A Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. Uh, this was on. This was on a trip to. Um, we did a five-day loop, uh, using. We went from our home through all over mm -hmm. a bunch of frozen lakes to connect to the um, that historic trail that we opened up, and then go back home. But yeah, this is Scooby Mobile. And now it's got a license plate on it. Uh, do you guys need li special licensing for the tr the trailers as well? No, no, it's just uh, just just ornamentation. Oh, I got you. It's just uh, just no, a decoration, a, is it? Yeah, it's a plate from uh, somewhere in the states that has, uh, and then there's I think a uh, uh, Canadian Ranger plates as well. But that's our work. Yeah. 
Very cool. This is amazing. A yeah. drone shot over a lake showing you guys and you know it's uh very very remote do you have do you have good gps signals up there for your drone or are you kind of just taking a chance with it no yeah, no we have not that we have uh, awesome coverage yeah yeah excellent and here we go this looks like mike Galit's riding his kawasaki through the water <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think that's really crossing Justin snowmobile through oh, the deep creek dirt dirt bike yeah. is that right <laughs> yeah. you could snowmobile through there have you oh, ever yeah. ridden on that what's the worst conditions that you've snowmobiled on have you been through stuff like this where it's yeah. just but mud and rocks yeah, water yeah like we uh unfrozen rivers up to two feet mm. yeah Really? Yeah, we have a, a notorious river south of Atlin that, uh, that too much current in it and doesn't freeze, and uh, it's on the famous uh, Telegraph Trail. And then when you want to go south, you have to cross uh, in two feet of water. It's just maybe uh, 20 meters wide, but it, it's very annoying. You have your belt wet. You have to uh, do a whole bunch of stuff to be able to to cross. But uh, yeah, we, we we do that with no machines too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's, do, do you have a winch on your do you have a winch on your snowmobiles no i'm yeah. thinking about it but uh we have no winch at the moment yeah might be kind of a, a handy thing right especially on the expeditions that's what mm -hmm. I think. now this is fraser right, that uh that we're looking at here is it yeah that's, that's right. right so that's the border with um alaska, alaska. And this was the picture of when we finally arrived after five weekends of uh, reopening the historic trail. We finally made it to Fraser. And uh, that region is called the White Pass. And I think we ended up going to Fraser three times that winter. And every single time it was white like this, whereas there's, white yeah, white out. There's beautiful scenery, but yeah. Yeah, nice. Now, did, when when you opened up the Gold Rush Pass, was it just your own fanfare or were you recognized uh, for doing that? And that was just our own thing. And we invited some friends here and there that came to help us on weekends, which was awesome because the goal was kind of to, yeah, to reopen that trail and have people use it uh, so that it <clears throat> stays in other people's memory. And uh, hopefully the next generation will keep on using it. Nice. Is there signs and, and so forth along the way as well? Like, is there information signage? No, 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 no it's, there's it's not. very raw. There's, yeah. uh, there's nothing. Yeah. And, uh, it's just until someone breaks the trail, it can be uh, pretty hard to find or uh, to, to break. Actually, yeah, it's, it's not an easy trail. It can be easy once broken, but there's no signage. There is blaze. So, you know, we, we put blazes on trees and people in the past put blazes on trees. You can still find uh, yeah, help to find the trail. Yeah, but no, no, uh, no organized signs or things like that. And here's another shot. You can see Scooby running behind the machines here. Yeah. How do you yeah. know when to let him out? You you mentioned he's actually clipped into the ski boost. Uh, how do you know when to let him out and run? Or like this? Yeah, that's pretty simple here. I'm doing a drone shot. So uh, I stop them. I stop the machine. I know I gotta stop again in five minutes after the shot. So uh, you can run and uh, <laughs> to get a little, little activity. Yeah. Scooby yeah. is 14 years old. He's so four, we yeah, try yeah. to be easy on him. <laughs> yeah, he's very, he's very and, old. So uh, he doesn't run too much anymore. Yeah. Well, what kind of, what kind of dog is he? Uh, he's, um, he's a mutt. <laughs> uh kind of alaskan husky you would call that this he's kind of a husky and a border collie mix yes yeah, so yeah. you can see the border collie in him for sure yeah, yeah justin's yeah. gonna go get him up on his on his yeah, lap sure. how do you think how do you think snowmobiling and these adventures in particular impact your family dynamics uh i think it's uh, when you travel together like that as a family you become a team and you work together in a complete different way than you do at home and i find it a very great yeah, it's very good for bonding and creating all these memories together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yep. And and before Justin, I, when you were first uh, dating, you and Philip used to do a lot of adventures like this. And there's one in particular where you actually uh, video a recent video where you end up at a at a trapper's cabin and 
you mentioned that you stayed there mm -hmm. like many, many moons ago. Yeah, that's right. So uh, Philippe, before I met him, did lots of adventures. And together when we met, we bike toured uh, and snowshoed and canoed uh, for three years around the world. Uh, and then, yes, indeed. So part of the trip was starting from home and snowshoeing the Carmites. And then we canoed to the Bering Strait. And then we went bike touring through 23 countries. Um, and Yes, I can remember what my point was. <laughs> but yeah, it's, like uh, we stayed at that cabin when we were snowshoeing, and I remember it was there was it was it's a log cabin, and there was no insulation between the logs, and it was one of those experiences where we slept in the cabin, but we were dreaming of being in our tent because there was mice all around us. So coming back to the cabin now, the owner has insulated it and it looked like a really cute getaway. And there were people staying in it. But if we ever come back there, we'll, we would stay in it again. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Uh, LaPointe, LaPointe wants to know, have you ever been on a podcast before? And what do you think of this one and all the chat? <laughs> <laughs> ah, loving it <laughs> yeah we've awesome. done we've done more like business interviews kind of stuff so this is really fun to uh to just be ourselves and talk about the stuff we love to do for fun yeah i have awesome. the i have the best i have the best people watching this too and and right. the ones that jump in the chat to uh to uh comment and ask questions are are amazing passionate snowmobilers and i knew they'd love you guys because we've had follow her north on and uh everybody loved her and i thought this is a no-brainer you know yeah yeah throwing sparks says you guys are living the life for sure mm -hmm. you know here we have the here we have the toyota hilux in a river yeah yeah that's right now did yeah. philip did you build the box on this thing it's a the racking that's system like that. that was my uh, yeah. covid 19 uh, project uh I'm, I'm not a fabricator so it was my first project with metal work and uh it worked. Uh, so yeah, of course, on like uh, most of those Toyotas, the box was completely rusted out, uh, and then decided to get rid of it to uh, build my own uh, aluminum box uh, and canopy, and so we can have the tent on the roof there, uh, awning on the side, and enough uh, space to put all our uh, camping equipment. And uh, we use the truck to explore in the Yukon or in northern BC and. Yeah, also the uh, capacity to carry uh, one of the dirt back in the back. And yeah, we can I go think there's a picture of that. Ways. Yeah, we can go quite somewhere. I just, noticed a, I just noticed that's Justin right there on the dirt bike behind you. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah. The green oh, yeah. thing there. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, too, that's so where does he, where does, he sit, the, does he sit up on the mattress when he's not riding on the bike? <laughs> 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 no, he really builds a rack. So uh, that we can carry the machine uh, so and just get right in the right. Yeah. Right, yeah. 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 Very cool. This is a great shot here. Yeah. That's uh, when we drove the, the Cannell Road. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. And what's the Cannell Road? What's what's important about it? Yeah. The Cannell Road was built uh, during, World War II? during World War II. Yeah. To bring oil. Uh, from uh, Hens, Alaska, from, from uh, the Northwest Territories to Hens, Alaska. So it was going from uh, east to west Canada for, for a few hundred kilometers, or maybe a thousand. And so it's been a, a, a road quick uh, built quickly during World War II to uh, to provide oil for the war efforts. <clears throat> so now it's a it's barely it's a barely maintained road. So I think they grade it once a year or something like that, and it's. Uh, it's more than a track. It's not quite a road, and it's it's beautiful. It goes in uh, just amazing uh, landscape in uh, in the uh, in the Yukon and Northwest Territories. Mm -hmm. And there is a bunch of uh, vehicles uh, from World War II uh, abandoned on the along the track. So and that's and that's very nice. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Yeah. And how many miles is that trail? That's mile one. Yeah, it, it, I'm not too sure. Uh, no. like, like, uh, not, not, not quite a not quite a thousand. Yeah, I would say 600, yeah. 800 kilometers one way, something yeah. like that. And there's two part. There's two parts and of it too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it starts cool. not very far from. It starts about a hundred kilometers from home at uh, Johnson's John, Crossing. Johnson's Crossing, and it goes quite some ways all the way to the Northwest Territories. It, it is a uh, 
very beautiful road, but there is no service, no gas, uh, no no cell phone service or any kind. So the road is not technic technical, but you need to be well prepared to drive uh, that thing. Yeah, excellent. Oh, that that sounds really cool. I love I love when a trail has some real heritage and importance right, to yeah. to you know the war and and all the efforts like that. So um, mm -hmm. that'd be neat to explore. Uh, here we are through uh, through uh, an overflow. Here is this what you call an overflow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so and it's. How, uh, how it's a bunch of water that's uh, in between the ice and under the snow. And how thick would the ice be below this, below the water? Uh, typically, on small lakes like that in the Yukon, we like three to four feet. So you have no fear of going through. No, it's just exactly. you're, you're gonna. Yeah, if you have overflow, really you have good ice because it means uh, all that weight on top of the ice. Really, it means the ice is fine. This is not the problem. Uh, the overflow around here, anyway, are caused by uh, the weight of snow. The weight of snow uh, pushing the ice down and the water coming up by little cracks. Or the overflow on shores is by the lots of the lakes in the Yukon are uh, dropping. Uh, the level of water is dropping during the winter. So the, at one point, the creeks, uh, the water from the creeks coming in are flooding the the lake on surface so there's two ways of getting overflow in the yukon and that year specifically was the a lot of snow pushing the ice down and the ice coming up and uh, there you go you have that and of yeah. course it's pretty hard when you pull a load i mean without a load it could be fun right with a powerful machine but when you pull something it's just terrible yeah that's right uh, outdoor hobby guy says in quebec we call that stuck in the slush that's a nightmare uh in the old days with old machine like double trucks or the the old tundras uh it was a nightmare even without the load right all machine would get stuck in that nowadays modern machine are fine until you pull something heavy <laughs> yeah oh absolutely absolutely rob the oil guy wants to know how are the grizzlies up there on your trips um so in uh, in the winter they were well, they're sleeping most of the time there, there is a few incidents uh, sometime where grizzlies are waking up in the winter for food or whatever we never had that but uh, in the summer yeah there, there is grizzlies lots of lots and lots of black bear and grizzlies but they they, they try to avoid us so as far as we know we we can uh, sometime from camp like we, we had a uh, last year Beautiful camp in the mountains where we were uh, camping on the with the Toyota there and the dirt bikes and there was a massive grizzly just a few hundred meters, uh, several nights, doing his stuff but uh, not caring for us at all. So uh, yeah, you just, you just want to make sure you can run faster than Leandra and Justin. That's all. That's why. Right. That's all. That's all I'm training for. <laughs> but uh, the bears don't mind. We we do a lot of noise. If we walk somewhere, we make a lot of noise to make sure that the, the the bears are uh, no uh, we hear and usually there's no problem uh, with machines there's no problem and when we walk uh, when we hike or stuff like that we, we we are always careful we always think about it we uh we careful with where we store food uh or, or, or garbage and uh not to have any attractions right uh most of the time the grizzlies or black bear are a problem close to the village when they start to visit people's garbage then sometimes the, those bears are becoming problem and needs to be removed. But there's a very, very rarely problem in the bush. Yeah. Do you get polar bears up there? No. Yeah. No. 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 There's Justin on the KLX just ripping through the through this water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of water where we are. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is a newer newer truck. Yeah, so this is, um, we have the 87 Toyota for more the, the, the challenging or the tracks closer to home. And because it has close to 500,000 kilometers on it, or it has for, yeah, we don't want to take it on the long trip. So say we did some remote highways in the Yukon, like the Dempster and then the Canal Road that we just saw the picture of, and there's some others. Then we take the this 
truck that's more comfortable for the three of us and the dog and uh, is easier for, yeah, longer mileage driving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And you've got it set up. Did you build the, the, uh, the, the camping equipment on that? Uh, well? We bought the canopy, but Philippe welded uh, a rack to go over top of the can canopy, like an exoskeleton that holds the rooftop tent and uh, recovery oh, gear. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right on. There's your typical snowmobile and shot there. Yeah. You know, winding down the hill, going down towards the lake and the mountains yeah. in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. last year on the way to the Yukon. So, uh, that was uh, that trip with all the overflow. So we're having a little bit of a good time here in the forest, and we have to go to that lake that we know is gonna be overflowed for sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's okay. There, that shows a dirt bike on the back of the Hilux right there. Yeah, there you go. That's very cool. Yeah. 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 And it looks like is that a is that like a a stretcher toboggan on the back like a. Or is that a fuel no, tank it's, uh, that's above the... It's a little rack I, I, I welded with leftover uh, steel from, uh, some, from another project, maybe. No, no? you mean, you mean no, the um, traction board? The plastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it a, yeah, they're traction boards. Is that what boards. it is? Yeah, sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. to put under the tires when you get stuck. That's yeah, right. exactly. That's right, that's right. Nice. That thing would be a beast off-road. Mm. It is, yeah. It's not bad at all. There isn't a whole lot to it, that's for sure. It sits up nice and high. You know, mm -hmm. but the, uh, yeah. And look at the mountains in the background. What mountain range is that? That's the uh, Kluane National Park that we see in the background. In the Yukon. In the Yukon. Oh, yeah, sweet. So yeah. Outdoor hobby guy says, forget the truck. What a view. It's <laughs> yeah. 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 Greg Kelly says the scenery is unbelievable. It's true. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the Yukon and Northern BC is just unbelievable. And so wild. And to and think so of the beautiful. places like like this that you can drive right through the middle of it all. Yeah, mm. that's right. Yeah, we are. You know, look at it. Yeah. What is this? Is mining road or why yep. would this so, road be there? It, yeah, this road right here is the Nahani Range Road. Oh, yeah. Um, it goes to um, it, it comes <laughs> off the Campbell Highway in the Yukon and then goes uh for longer than we thought to it. It goes to a tungsten mine. Uh, about 400 kilometers and it's all like this and some really nice open valleys and then we discovered it actually keeps on going uh, like there's so many roads here that are not on the map <laughs> yeah. but yeah, yeah going into amazing landscapes oh, that's wicked have you snowmobiled down this road no, no but it's on our uh, we so have a list. long list <laughs> <laughs> you could you could so you could actually map this on the gps and then you exactly yeah. know exactly where that road is before when you hit it yeah. with the sleds yeah yeah that's right. justin you could get that justin you could get that 600 wound right out along here oh yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's a great mike gulitz has been seeing the drone shots and commenting here's another great shot mm -hmm. wow like look at that yeah. yeah that's uh that's close to home right that that's yeah that one's uh here. that's kluani lake there oh is it okay, okay. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Do you fish, Philip? Oh yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah what, we do you, fish. what do you like to What do you like to catch? Um. Well, we mostly do uh, lake trout uh, in the big lakes, and uh, for fun with the kids, we do uh, pikes. Pike, northern pike. Northern pikes. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, yeah, fishing is pretty good around here, so uh, it's always. Uh, a good experience with a family to go fishing. Uh, we have a big lake here in Atlin that's about uh, 150 kilometers long, with uh, sur surrounded by mountains and glaciers, and uh, there is very good fishing in that lake. Oh, that's cool. This this shot here isn't coming on my screen very well, but it's the Northern Lights. Um, mm -hmm. The actual real photo is amazing. Um, I'm not getting anything on this couple little blasts of green, but. The uh, how often do you see the northern lights where you are? Oh, regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a matter of being awake at the right time. <laughs> Sometimes they show yeah. up around three o'clock, and then often we're sleeping. But <laughs> if the the yeah. good thing about are you guys like at home, we have an outhouse, or when we're camping, you know, you got to go outside to the bathroom too. So if you have a couple of extra cups of tea before going to bed and wake <laughs> up a few times, then you can stoke the fire and check for northern lights. <laughs> 
Yeah, nice. That's the thing. This year has been a crazy year where we are for Northern Lights. Like mm -hmm. it seems people are seeing them weekly and oh. uh, I haven't seen them this year. We've missed yeah. them every time, you know, um, it's, uh, it's uh, still hoping to see them. Maybe this winter oh. they'll be active, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And here's, here's the truck in the snow. Is it good in the snow going up into the mountains like this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We can lower the, by lowering the air pressure on the tires, of course, we get, we gain more traction. Yeah. And eventually, you can put some chains on and keep on going in even way deeper snow than that, for sure. Yeah. Now, the, the peaks of the mountains here look look different. Uh, is it because you're at near the top here or? What, uh, yeah. What so here we are. We are exploring an area that's kind of newer to us in the southern Yukon. And this is a set of old mining roads that goes way up in more coastal looking mountains with the sharp peaks. Indeed, that's not typical of your Yukon landscape. Uh, but yeah, this road goes like right up to a glacier, actually. Yeah. Oh, sweet. I hope yeah. you sent me shots of that. Yeah. I think there is um, a glacier shot really coming up. We'll have to go back there in the summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nice. Do you have uh, do you have glaciers that you snowmobile too? Yeah, there oh, is. Yeah. We have actually one video on our channel that's all about snowmobiling to a glacier. Oh, I'll have to check that out. There we yeah. go. See, I'm fairly new yet, so I haven't watched all the videos yet. I've got, watched mm -hmm. uh, quite a few of them, but not all of them. But uh, yeah, Sudbury Hills are a little smaller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now this is a there. There's a good shot of you stuck in the overflow and the Scooby. Yeah. That's the Scooby wagon on the left. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You're pulling the toboggans through one by one. Yeah. Yeah. What a workout! Man, was. what a mess. Right, mm -hmm. when, Philip, when you mentioned earlier that that you've you like with with the the group of guys or colleagues that you work with, where they get stuck in overflow like this and then they just camp there for the night. Are you worried about the stuff freezing or does it stay unfrozen yeah. because there's so much water? That's right. So before now, it, it will, it would, it, once the water is it exposed to the air, it's going to freeze. So uh, you need absolutely to, uh, let's say in our situation where the entire lake was frozen, there was no point to fight the way it was because uh, we couldn't move anymore. So you have to build, uh, you have to build the snow under the machine build a whole tower to make sure that the snow machine is above water so you have to wiggle your machine put some snow under on one side and then the other side until it, it rises above the water then you clean up the track and then you can go can go camp then you go camp and the next morning everything's frozen around and the the the, the access trail uh, is completely frozen and it's just like a hard trail but you you don't want to leave your machine overnight in the overflow you have to fight very hard to rise a machine above the water on a little amount of ice and, and snow uh, otherwise um, i'm not sure what will happen uh, you, you will need to come back with a chisel and chisel the snow machine out so yeah don't leave your machine in the water you need to get the machine out and uh, go and then you go camp dry rest and the next day uh, things are actually quite easy as all water are, is for them yeah, that's a good point. See, I wasn't, I, I know somebody that actually got a snowmobile stuck in slush, left it for the night and come up the next day. It was near a roadway and it was frozen solid and they were chipping and they had a, hooked onto a truck and he tried mm. to yank it out. And it was a mess. Like you could probably ruin the sled before you actually got it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah no, you, you don't do that. Right. Yeah. So there, that's a, is this a super duty? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 250 yeah, nice. a crew cab long walk, super duty. So there yeah. we are uh, in Haines, Alaska. Um, we were looking for some tracks yeah. uh, to take other than the normal ones we take. And this one uh, was a five kilometer narrow path that was actually not really suitable for this big of a truck, but like, we were... It was so narrow that we couldn't even turn around. So we were committed and it took us way up into the high country and it was actually quite spectacular. Yeah, it was pretty hot That's track. wild. It was not, we, didn't, we couldn't turn around. That was where yeah. we had to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it's a rental. 
right? <laughs> <laughs> I like the sides are all like scratched up and yeah. like it looks like you've got clay scratched against it. And, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here, this is, I think this is that video where Justin was filming. Well, and he's learning, right? Because that's the thing. When your buddies get stuck, you just got to run the camera. You know? <laughs> so, and that's and that's that's what he did here but uh yeah, yeah i think this is good. the one where you had to actually unhook the sleighs and you know leandra was waist deep in the water and you know there's philip with his bare hands if anyone didn't believe it yeah yeah how long did, how long really did it take you to get out of this this mess Sorry, uh we spent on uh, most likely an hour to get the three machines across that tiny little yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, slew of water. Mm -hmm. uh, but we had to go through it. I mean, Shaw was on the other side. There was a little bit of water where it's we are, it, it's a part of the Yukon River here. It's just a little slew yeah. down the side, and uh, uh, there's no choice. You have to. So we, we had measured before, there was not that much water, right? But And yet, the chance that the, uh, the chances that the ice breaks was pretty high, but uh, there was only a couple of feet of water at the, at the most, and we have to go. So we have a come along as well. We have, we have tons of ideas of how to get out. So it took us most likely an hour you know, to, to get out yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah it's not too. Yeah. And the dog sitting there thinking, you know, it was warm back in the log cabin. <laughs> 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 thinking something. Yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Like this, doesn't this make you feel small when you see a picture like this, mm -hmm. you know, and right, the, yeah. the mountains yeah. towering in the background and the, uh, yeah. the truck looks yeah. tiny. What else is there? Is that a, you were, were you with friends this day? Yeah. Two of yeah. That's right. With yeah. friends. Yeah. And that's in a corner. So we're in British Columbia there. And basically on, on the picture, there is Alaska, the Yukon and British Columbia on the same, on the same shot there. Oh, that's insane. So we're in a corner, a corner of British Columbia, the northwest corner of British Columbia. Mm -hmm. Very cool. It's an epic shot. What kind of drone do you have? So we have a... Um, DJI Mavic DJI, Air. DJI Mavic Air. Nice, perfect. Great little oh, drone. Right. So, yeah, this is... Um, <laughs> uh actually in the same area as the last drone shot uh so we came upon this blue turquoise blue glacial lake down below there it was, it was very beautiful how, how big is that lake is it just a pond or is it a fairly big yeah. body of water um it's between the two i would say <laughs> it's bigger yeah. than a pond uh but there's a, a glacier the smallest glacier i ever saw not much left of a glacier. It's just a uh, hundred meters by a hundred meters glacier coming into that pond there. So that's the glacier, the gray uh, right here. Is that the glacier? No, uh, it's that's a bit a, farther yeah. to the right off yeah. the it's off the picture here. Oh, it's off the, the right. picture. Okay, yeah. I'm not hiding it. Okay, no, what is that? No. Is that just dirt on rock? That, that that's right here. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, leftover moraine from the glacier when, when the glacier was uh, a lot bigger. The big gravel pie now. Now, can you see the the effect of climate change uh, with the with adventures like this? Like, do you notice it from? I mean, you've been doing this for decades, Philip. Mm -hmm. um, what are you noticing out there? Well, the mostly the the winter are not so cold anymore. That's uh, the big one. Uh, much warmer winters, and uh, the glaciers are melting fast. For sure, and then yeah, yeah. Now the winters are, are very, very easy for us compared to what it was 25 years ago. I remember that like, I was 25 years ago in the southern Yukon, and in January uh, minus 30, you know, it was always minus 45, minus 50, and minus 35 was warming up, and everybody felt good at minus 35. And now it's now now it's minus 35 happens, you know. It's, just once in a while, and it's uh, it's painful for everyone. Now it used to be, oh yeah, minus thirty-five. There we go. We can go ski doing, dog mushing, or skiing. It's so much better. But 
there's big changes when it comes to especially December, January. It's uh, yeah, it's changed a lot. And have you seen have you seen areas that you went back to that you went, whoa, like this has totally changed as far as there used to be a glacier here, and now it's. Yeah, yep. we have a glacier like that, a, a glacier close to home. Uh, it's actually an ice cape, a very big ice cape between British Columbia and Alaska. And that one is melting uh, fast. So every year we can see changes there. Every single yeah. year we go there. The, the ice cape is way thinner and narrower. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I've seen pictures and it's just, it's, you must, I, I find it interesting. You must see that firsthand. So how, mm -hmm. uh, how long did it, the, the, it shows a dog there, the steering wheel. How long did it take you to teach him to drive? <laughs> <laughs> and are you afraid of him <laughs> wanting to run you over? Like he's, he's remembering that water situation in the winter. He's revving it up right now. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. What mountains that, that back there? um what the mountain is that that's that's pretty uh, crazy it's like it's yeah. like big white or something like that yeah that's right it's, it mm -hmm. looks like big white i can't remember it's by car cross it's by car cross uh yes i don't remember the name of the mountain but it's in the southern yukon and we wow. are on tagish lake there neat looks like you're zipping along pretty good there is a yeah. good shot it shows justin carrying a couple cans of gas and some shovels yeah. and stuff and you know yeah it's great mm -hmm. yeah paul says what an amazing place to live we want to make sure we get out there one day yeah, yeah well, let us know if you're in the area <laughs> it's amazing mm -hmm. yeah there's another uh, epic shot you know yeah. up yeah. in the mountains with the truck and overlooking this body of water mm -hmm. pretty crazy in the clouds yeah yeah, it's beautiful. And there's, yeah, it's really amazing. Actually, a lot of these now tracks are due to gold mining history here when there was people mining all over the place, pushing tracks through that are now not used anymore by miners necessarily. Some still are, but it's, yeah, for quarters, dirt bikers, or like for, for four by fouring, it's, it's an amazing playground over here. Yeah. When, when people watch your adventures, whether it's summer or winter on, on YouTube, like what do you, what do you want them to take away from it? Um, good question. I think for me, I hope they are inspired. Um, yeah. We give ideas on things to do if they're in the area. What about you? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And do you have any plans for for adventures coming up? Like things you want to do? Like do you do you have a bucket list? Uh, yeah, we have a loose bucket list. <laughs> we have plenty of uh, the dreams and ideas and things we want to do. Um, some of them are happening, and some of them are planned. And then yeah, we have actually we do have like a, an ongoing list of things we want to do, the trips we want to make, and then like Philippe was saying earlier, for for example, the the expedition we'll do this spring. We have 10 ideas, but depending on the weather conditions, uh, one of those will become a reality. Yeah. Oh, sweet. There's a nice night shot of the tent. Yeah. You know, do you have to keep it vented? Like you said, this, the, the stove is not airtight. Does it get smoky in there or is it pretty good? It's pretty good once it gets yeah. going well. They kind of sometimes can be smoky once you <laughs> once you get them going. It's pretty rustic. But yeah, it's pretty it's pretty simple. But once they're going well, um, it's fine and we. Yeah, it's do you, do you run into other people when you're set up like this and you're staying more than a like you're staying a night and and a bit like do do you run into other people in their travels or are you pretty alone out there? I we I don't think we have run into other people yet. Uh, you're pretty alone. Uh, last year when we went to Dawson, we met some people who were hunting bison in the Yukon. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. During the day. Yeah. During the day. Yeah. 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 It's kind of you know you hear a lot of people running into people and these great stories about you know hospitality, but you are so remote that that's not even an option. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, so here's another picture on one of those mining roads in the yeah. And this is actually in BC, yeah, in a remote part of BC. And it's just it's amazing. And we keep finding more and more of these that we go back to and explore more as uh, it's yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah I, I, I noticed that the the like the here we're in the mountains, so there is no trees, but I noticed like a lot a lot of the ones where you hear, see the hillsides in the background, the trees are very small. Is there a reason for that? Uh, yeah, it's the boreal forest here. So because uh, it's dry and a harsh climate, they don't grow very tall, the trees here. And it's really interesting. Yeah, then when you go to the coast in Alaska, of course, they're giants. But yeah, the boreal forest here means that the trees are not very big. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, see, yeah. that's the thing. It looks very... Uh, it, it almost... Someone said about Sudbury, and it almost looks like Sudbury, but they're... Their tree issue is from pollution, not not so much, and over over foresting um, for yeah. heat, but uh, oh, yeah. not so yeah. much the uh, not so much the the fact that they just don't grow, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah, yeah so outdoor hobby yeah. outdoor yeah, hobby guy says it's a very short growing time as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. the season's right. so short. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Are, are you? Are you in the land of the midnight sun or or how long are your days up there? Yeah, we are in the land of the midnight sun. Uh, we yeah. have, we don't have the sun. Like, we have like, yeah, we have the light. We don't, we have like in the summer, our longest day, uh, or longest day, our shortest night is about two hours and then it's not even dark. Um, yeah, we have permanent light, but not, we don't yeah. see the sun. So the mean uh, the 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 sun at midnight would be more at Dawson City elevation. Yeah. But we we are far away north that we have in June. Let's say no no nights uh, in June and beginning of July. Yeah, is that no right? That's gotta and be then, that's gonna be wild to get accustomed to, is it? Yeah, it yeah. takes, it takes, yeah. in the, especially, lovely. yeah, and in the winter, like now the days are short. And then as the days start to get longer, you kind of like, you think it's dinner time and it's already 11 p.m. But then, yeah, you adjust. No, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. It's, nice. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, Greg Kelly wants to know if is mining still active out there and what do they mainly mine? Uh, yeah, there's still a bit of mining. Uh, in Atlin, it's mostly placer miners, so uh, people are uh, looking for gold on surface, on, uh, on gravel, and it's uh, gold, yeah, mostly gold. Uh, is that stuff. really what you guys are doing out here, is looking for the, the big gold nugget? Cashing uh, no, in? Is that the, we, is we that the work trick? For mining. Yeah, but people are obsessively, uh, gold fever is a real thing. <laughs> Some people are yeah, gold I, fever and are obsessively looking for gold, and it's uh, it's kind of nice. We we both work for mining and mining exploration at some point in our life. Uh, it's there is less and less gold, and it's uh, I think harder and harder to mine anywhere when it comes to permits, and it's more and more expensive too because to find gold uh, now in the Yukon or in northern BC they have to dig deeper, right? So it's more money. Uh, as uh, the golden surface been uh, found, uh, I mean, a long time ago now. Right? So uh, there is still there's still a few bigger mine in the Yukon and uh, a few here in Atlin, but less and less. Yeah, Mike Leitz wants to know if he comes out there, would you take him on a tour? Of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come and check it out. There you go. <laughs> An outdoor hobby guy, he gives you a great compliment here. He says, "Man, these photos are like watching a national." geographic video mm -hmm. it's true you should watch the videos man it's it's yeah, the, watch the it's videos, incredible yeah. it really is and I, I love how leander gives her her like she does turns it into a vlog so she does her daily updates and it's very unique yeah. it's very mm -hmm. unique it's not your typical mud rats the helmet on the camera going 80 miles an hour down a trail <laughs> and, you know, no, so talking sorry. smack to your buddies and your buddy's yeah. talking smack to you. It's a, it's a, it's a story. It's a, it's an adventure that they take you on. It's really cool. Make sure yeah. you check out the the Bryant family on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought gold yeah. big big time dollars to mine for sure. I was watching a um, a uh, 
it was Dawson City where the gold rush was, right? Am I correct in saying that? Back in the day? And the, yeah. the, the, the biggest money was in getting the people to, to go over the mountain. Like people don't realize how like the gold wasn't just in Dawson city. You went there and then you, you paid someone to guide you over the mountain. And there was hundreds of people going up the side of the mountain and most of them didn't yeah. go. They just turned around and, and right. gave up. Is that right? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah something like that. Yeah. The, each, each person, had to uh, carry one one metric ton of equipment with them. It was mandatory. So to go uh, over the mountains from Alaska to the Yukon, they had to uh, climb that crazy pass called uh, the Chilkut Pass, Ch Chilkut pass uh, 50 times. They had to, to get all to their gear up. 20 yeah. kilos of gear uh, because the RCMP wa was waiting for them. And actually, you had to come with one ton of equipment. And then they had to do that pass again and again in the winter in terrible conditions and a lot of them uh, quit uh, at that time of course uh, until uh, uh, a railway was built after a few years uh, to bring the yeah. people on top of the mountain but uh, then they would strip the people from the from their money with uh, with the train tickets and stuff like that <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I heard. It was more of a, it was more lucrative for the operators there than it oh, was for the people searching yeah. for mm -hmm. gold. They were just, they were basically robbed for every penny that they could pay oh, yeah. to, yeah. to get them, yeah. help them out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I heard, that, yeah, like there's a, I think it was um, uh, Last Man Standing. I think it was the the comedian did a big thing on it. It was just, it, I never realized it. You, you hear of Dawson City Gold Rush and you think that it was just like, in Bugs Bunny cartoons, you know, when Bugs yeah, Bunny puts a big thing of gold on the bar and, you know, yeah. it, but it wasn't like that at all. Yeah. yeah. There's very little gold to be found. I heard that it, was, it wasn't yeah. so much as a rush as there's very little to be found and it was very mm -hmm. hard to find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is, this shot here is amazing. Like there's, yeah, there's just France, France uh, coat there. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So this is actually uh, near the gold fields of Dawson City. We're in what's called the Black Hills. Um, and we're on what looks like an old mining or a mining road. There is more active mining in Dawson City. Um, so, yeah, we these hills are notorious for having lots of wind. And so we spent a lot of time here uh, breaking trail through wind packs now to the point that we had yeah, to leave our loads behind, break trail for a few kilometers, come back, pick up our loads. And yeah. like we, we spent a couple or we spent a day doing that. Wow. So you're just going a little bit, getting your stuff, moving yeah. a bit more. Yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, we the, talked the about mining. How is, that. is the trapping industry big up there? Yeah. Yeah. Also. Yeah. 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 Well, less and less, of course, but uh, a lot of uh, trap lines are still active. Uh, but people yeah. don't uh, don't trap actively anymore. The, the, the trap line still exists, but people go to the trap line, but uh, uh, there's not much trapping happening. Oh, I got you. Yeah, the, the, it's more like the yeah. weekend getaway kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I got you, like recreational hobby hunters and things like that. Yeah, totally. Trappers, yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Beautiful sunset, or is this a sunrise? I, I never know. Oh, yeah, right. it's a sunrise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's always. See, yeah, I, this is a I don't even sunrise. bother. I don't even bother guessing. You know, <laughs> guessing anymore. <laughs> I'm always wrong. <laughs> Depends which way you look. Uh, I, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Right. Beautiful shot. So you make sleeping out in the snow in in an army tent glamorous. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Have you ever thought about guiding? I mean, we have people asking if you'd take them on a tour. Yeah. Have you ever thought about adding a guiding business to your, uh, to your? Yeah, yeah we, did. we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not that easy in, in British Columbia. The the permitting is insane. The bureaucracy behind it is pretty insane. So yeah. we find yeah. other, oh, okay. other other jobs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But it's happened that people like from through YouTube or social media channels that they came here and we went, you know, we <laughs> we took them on some of the tracks around here or whatever. So yeah, we're, if you're in the area, let us know. If we're available, we have time. We're always happy to do something. Very cool. 
Very cool. Now, Leandra, are you checking out your studs on your track here and your and your <laughs> right. or, you know, what were you They're doing here? <laughs> yeah, this is uh it's hard to tell in the picture here, but in the video it shows better. This is a spring glacier, it's called. So, like say in the valley, um, the water accumulates and it kind of like forms a dam of ice. And behind just behind that, the ice is not very thick. And here in this part of the Yukon, those spring glaciers are really big. Um, and I was breaking the trail and I went just a bit too high up and I fell through the ice and I had water to my belly button right there where I <laughs> am standing. <laughs> so yeah. you're actually in water there too. I'm wow. in water. Yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. So yeah, that and, was interesting. So yeah. Go ahead. It looked like the other. It looked like the other guys got through, um, <laughs> but you had you you didn't. Yeah, I showed them where not to go. <laughs> they went yeah. around. The, they went around to the left of me there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. is that rope? Is that rope or cable attached to your machine? Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to tore her out. But the ice broke again under only one ski, and that's why she uh, tipped over. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. What a yeah mess. It's too bad that uh, so she tipped over, and then uh, a lot of the machine went, went in the water, and then uh, it stayed too long on the side. So it was the oil because a four stroke. The oil went into the cylinders, and it wouldn't uh, wouldn't turn over anymore. So we had to camp Actually, there it's... just behind to let the the oil trickle back down and after that what was it oh yeah you wouldn't still it would crank over after a few hours but um it wouldn't start though uh, because oh yeah uh, we, there was not much gas in the machine so when it, when she tipped over the fuel pump sucked some air and so there was it was air locked anyway it was a bit of a show there yeah and plus <laughs> yeah. that was the most remote part yeah, of the most trip, yeah, so. the most remote part where you cannot have a machine down there or you need to leave it there and uh, come back with a helicopter or something because it's too far on either side it's too far too, too far away to tow a machine yeah have you ever had to send a helicopter to pick up one of your sleds no no we haven't it's it's very expensive isn't it <laughs> yeah it must be terrible yeah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah like I hear the mountain guys having to do it, and it's I couldn't imagine, yeah. you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, that that's uh, that, that, would be, that would be terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a great shot of the tent all lit up at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and although it's heavy and a lot of work to set up, it's really so nice comfy. to have that comfortable space every night where you can sleep well, nice and, and warm, dry. and dry all dry your things out. Bad. Yeah. So you're really ready and rested for the next day. Yeah. Whatever temperature it yeah. is outside, it's always warm in there. Even by minus 45, those stands, you can still get some serious heat inside, dry your thing, you know, eat uh, properly, have a social life. If you go there with your colleagues or, or family, yeah. it, it, is, yeah. it is heavy, but there's a great uh, advantages for uh, for fixing you up at night for uh, good sleep, good food, and uh, drying your thing. What do you eat for food uh, when you do you steak and lobster tails and Caesar salad? Well, uh, <laughs> I know, well, uh, we bring uh, moose meat, uh, bear sausages, and uh, a little bit of vegetable. We're not much into vegetables too much, so we're into you, meat. You, you take you take good a good meal then, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's easy so to transport meat. Goes... Everything's frozen, so it's easy to transport frozen meat with you. That's true too, right? Um, no shortage of refrigeration. When you go in the water like that, like the toboggan, I guess it would sink as well. Like, does it does it ever get the tent wet or like too hard to work with, or is the stuff pretty well packed? Um, so the, the toboggan style we have there, they are plastic tubs. They they wouldn't necessarily uh, sink. Uh, they they float pretty good. If the tent gets wet, it's not much of an issue, really. Yeah. With the stove, we could dry yeah. it out. Yeah, yeah, you can dry it out. It's not actually the tent every day accumulates condensation that freeze. The tent every day gets heavier with some kind of a bit of ice mixed with a canvas, 
uh, if it was completely wet, it would be just get heavy, but it wouldn't be a much of an issue. So, but so we keep our, let's say, cots and sleeping bags in uh, dry bags. So if we go through water, they don't get wet. But the tents is okay. So uh, it will be okay. Yeah, right on. Another great drone shot. Mike Elites will love this one. He's got some like this from Sudbury, actually, from us last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Very neat wilderness. Now that looks like a stake beside that lead snowmobile. Is that uh, is this yeah. staked across the lake? It yeah, is. It is yeah. uh, because there we are following uh, the trail of the Yukon Quest. Uh, that have, that's a dog mushing race in the. That's Yukon. a dog sled race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and then they yeah. they put stake like that stakes uh, along the trail. So here the trail was covered again by uh, by snow, but the, the the stakes are still showing and it's pretty handy to to have them sometimes they are removed yeah. after the race sometimes they leave them after the race but there they are the last year uh they they were easy, easy to spot yeah cool now have you done dog sledding i know you mentioned skiing and everything like that have you yeah. have you That's right. yeah uh, so that that Is trail it? from home to you dawson city we we happen to I've made it uh, partially or completely, either me with a uh, dog team, uh, with Leandra by snowshoes, or with my uh, colleague of the, the Kenyan Rangers by snow machine. So we actually know that trail very well. Very cool. Yeah, that's a, that looks like a great spot. Uh, Rob, yeah. the oil guy, wants to know when your season for snow ends. Uh, he, he get, he's guessing August. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you go if you go high enough yeah yeah we the lake like I said the big lakes they usually stay frozen till the last week of may or the first week of june um you can snowmobile like Philippe mentioned that earlier the best snowmobiling season is from december till may yeah that's a great season but yeah. usually by may you already want to get the dirt back out yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, this is a great shot of inside the tent, inside the army tent, and you can see the stove in the corner. You've got boughs of uh, evergreen on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So this is we were talking earlier about um, the snow melting or not melting. So this is on a trip on a five day loop we did where we didn't really want to shovel. The snow was kind of too soft to set up camp, but we didn't want to, we were tired and we didn't want to shovel the whole thing out because it's uh, well, quite a decent size we need to shovel out. <laughs> mm -hmm. So instead of shoveling, what you can do is add spruce boughs, which kind of melt into the snow and it makes a nice floor so you don't sink through. And it looks kind of nice too. That's good. And it smells yeah. good. Outdoor hobby guys from Quebec. He says that's an awesome shot, better than any of a Did I say yeah. that right? Well, yeah, almost. Yeah, Auberge, pretty close. Yeah, yeah. auberge. Yeah, auberge. Yeah. Auberge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's living. He says that's yeah. great. No, that's uh, that's really cool. And you got stuff hanging there. And when you say your gear dries, are we talking dry enough, or are you? Does it really dry out? It's dry, dry, like dry. bone dry. Yeah, yeah. Bone we have along all the walls. We have string, and then they're full oh, of yeah. everything drying at night. Yeah, it's bone dry in the morning. Sweet, and you look out that door and and the mountains there. That's just unbelievable mm -hmm. to 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 that's a million dollar view. Yeah, you know? that's that's for sure. <laughs> and he, yeah. <laughs> here's Philip. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that's uh. That's following us. <laughs> so were you um, were you pa packing down a path to, to drive through? No, I think it's um, me who um, dug a nice trench and overflow there, and he's coming. Or he's I think Philippe is on his way to help uh, pull me out. Oh no! You need yeah. deeper paddles, I think, Leander. Yeah. <laughs> Something, <laughs> or yeah. just to. Just to, it, does that help? Like hold it to the bar. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. There's that's no, no, that's, that's, yeah, that's one reason why we ordered actually the white track 900 days. Um, 
because for the tundra me i'm pulling a heavy load too and the tundra like yeah it's it's not it's not it was not the greatest for this kind of trip um so that's why we uh ordered this white track 908 in yeah this spring so yeah, that what we won't paddles have on it in. like how 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 deep's the paddle on the track? Uh, well, that's optional. You can pick the, the the paddle style for Scandic. I'm not sure, I can't remember what we picked, but there is different size indeed. Um, it's also the width, right? Uh, the my my track is 24 inch wide, so you have a ton of flotation for, uh, of course. Eh? So it's 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 a different style than the mountain machine, right? You have more flotation. It fights pretty good in the overflow, but it's a load. The, the load makes. Uh, an anchor like an anchor yeah. as soon as you disconnect from your load and you can go again with a white track or super wide it's not a problem it's, the problem is to get uh those bogan through uh that that's especially mine uh my toboggan is super wide for wider than my track so it's it's dragging behind right it's, it's not very good that's what we have mm -hmm. I just have to get my speakers working again. My headphones died. No, no. <laughs> Bear with me a second. There we go. Are you there now? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're here. I can't hear you. No. I think something happened. Yeah, you hear us now? Can you hear me? Nothing. No. Yeah, we do. We, we, we do. hear you. We hear you, yeah. Check, check. Hello. Hello, hello. Let's see if I can check that on here. I've lost audio here. Let's see. I think it's me more than you. Check. Yep. Justine? We can hear you. Can you stop the roster, Justine? Justine? Yeah, Thank you. It's uh, the last the last button. <clears throat> I can try to mute us and undo the How about now? Just hold on a second here. What it says. Yeah. Okay, let's move to the, uh, this way. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear us? I can. Sorry. Oh, perfect. Uh, what did I tell you at the start? I'm I'm probably going to be heading out, and then just just keep her going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> My 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 headphones were still connected, but they died. So, no, oh, really, no, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened there. Anyway, we're back. This is good, but uh, I think that's the same shot that we seen earlier. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, yeah. Uh, outdoor hobby side guy says you guys look like a great couple. By the way, oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I think so too. <laughs> Super nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Do you have dealers locally, like snowmobile dealers? Yeah. yeah. So we have our uh, Skidoo dealership is in uh, White House, uh, Yukon. It's about two hours from here. Oh, that's not too bad. No, it's not no. bad at all. No. And they, they have tons of choice. They're very, very nice store, full of toys. <laughs> yeah oh for sure that's like they are here too and you're handy enough to do all the work yourself on them or most of the work uh, yeah. Yeah. as far as getting parts will they ship them to you or do you go there and pick up parts uh we go there pick up we, for business we go to white house once a week anyway so that's it's pretty easy yeah. yeah this is the the pre the the preview of the the one video that we were talking about earlier where you yeah. went across and you go straight across but then you actually hit the side hill when you're and slid down it because it's all covered in ice. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You can kind of see it in the picture how the trail continues across the slough there, <clears throat> but it's actually a slab of ice that, uh, you know, when, when the winter starts, the water level is higher 
And so the ice forms within the water level drops and the ice goes down. So that trail that you just pointed out in India is actually like a slab of ice. So once the first of our snowmobiles gets on top of it, like it spins it out to the ice and then the other machines have a hard time to get up. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's just a sheet. It's like a skating rink. This yeah. is a great shot. It shows the Scooby mobile with the dog yeah. in the back. Just <laughs> there you go. Living the dream. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think you can get a bigger smile on the dog's face than that. No, that's that's right. amazing. Yeah. You know, and I guess that's the thing. He's part, he's part husky. So he's, yeah. he loves the cold. Yeah. yeah that's right? right. Yeah. Yeah. No, and this is Philippe's typical setup with the big toboggan and, uh, and the Scooby mobile behind it. How much weight do you think that whole train is? Yeah. Uh, you had to uh, guess. Uh, yeah, for four, four, five hundred pounds. Yeah, wow. You know, that? and you're and you're towing it dead weight through the snow too. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, uh, the super wise for that are uh, just just fine. They're, they're a great machine for towing a heavy load and with the low, you know, the low gear. This is just this is great. Yeah, Doesn't I heard they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. I heard they're amazing. Oh, another great drone shot across the lake of the three of you going across. That's right, yeah. 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 How long is your day typically as far as, you know, when you, when you, we can't say mileage because it just varies on uh, what you're doing, but yeah. do, you, do you start at 8 a.m. and go till no. four or? We, we want to be uh, going by uh, 10, that's right, by yep. 10 o'clock. It's hot. There's so much to do. Between uh, machine maintenance, the camp to uh, you know take down the camp, the, a little bit of maintenance here and there. Yeah, by by uh, we want to be going by ten. Yeah. In the morning. And then we go uh, all the way to in the spring at five or six o'clock in the uh, in the afternoon. Right, and then that'll give you a couple hours to set the tent up and. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, That's great. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there we go. That's the that's the last of the photos. But uh, no, it's uh, it's pretty epic what you guys are doing, and that's not saying it lightly. You know, like the uh, um, there's a lot of people out there like us on YouTube that that do our own thing and you know try and be these adventures. But this that's real adventure in my mind. It's keep doing what you're doing. You're doing an excellent job. Thank you. That thanks for the compliment. Yeah. Thank you. But I, I won't keep you much longer. Do you have any parting words? Uh, well, thank you very much for having us on the show. This, yeah. I'm really happy that we connected. Yeah, good time. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, if people want to stay in touch and follow your adventures, where else can they find you on YouTube, the the Bryant family? What about yeah. social media? Yeah, so we are also on Instagram and Facebook as the Bryant family. And we have a website, thebryantfamily.com. Uh, where we have kind of a travel blog and tips and tricks and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's that's where you can find us. That's awesome. Very good. Can't wait to watch them. Right up my alley, Outdoor Guy says. Mike Gulit says, great show. I'll watch you guys. Um, awesome. But thank you, everybody in the chat. Thanks for bearing with us while we had a late start on this thing. And <laughs> we lot. I thought we were live and I had one of my best shows to date, but no one's ever going to hear it or see it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But no, it was oh, a really fun show. Time. I knew it was going to be a great, I knew it was going to be a great show. Rob, the oil guy says great people. Uh, great session with the Bryant family, Gary, all the best. Um, you know, Rob says great people here, you know, right up my alley. I'm going to watch him. It goes on and on and on. Um, wonderful family and loves the adventures. The point says, you know, so you got some new fans here and some new love awesome. uh, that we're that we're sharing with you. And I'm glad to introduce you to my crowd. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll be talking about you for for shows to come. I know it. But, <laughs> yeah, well, we feel very honored to have been part of that. Thank you so much, yeah, everyone, you for your much, support. Yeah. No, no and uh, great to get to know you all. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just hang around after the credits roll, and we'll talk a bit after, off the air, and uh, and away we go. Great show okay. to the Bryants and stay awesome. safe out there. God bless is what Outdoor Hobby Guy says. And Mike Galit says he wants to see you come back. All right. Which we'd have you on any day for sure. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm going to roll the credits here. 
And away we go. Thanks a lot, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Um, same bat time, same bat channel. And I'll even press re record. <laughs> <laughs> It's a journey for